Good evening, everybody. I'd like to uh, call the meeting to order. It is uh, September 3rd at 7 o'clock. Um, can I have an acceptance of the agenda? Second. Second by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 It is unanimous. Great. Um, we'll start off with walk-ins. Are there any walk-ins this evening? None. Okay. Um, and uh, now we will uh, move forward way ahead of schedule on the um, report of the town administrator. Uh, leading off tonight, of course, is our number one subject, brown water. Uh, next week is going to be a big week in the brown water fight. Uh, we will be posting tonight a quick explanation of what causes the town water, what we've done, what we've done to fix it, what's going on. Uh, people can see at home, this is kind of reddish, that's iron. This is black, this is manganese. So this is the material that precipitates out in the pipe and causes a silt in the bottom of the pipes. What causes brown water is when that water gets roiled up, that silt goes into the water and it causes brown water. That has to be removed from the pipes. That's the issue that we have to clean up the pipes. Monday and Tuesday next week, we will be sending divers into the man lot water tank. We have to replace the man lot water tank was built in 1938. Hmm. The shutoff was put in in 1938. It no longer works. So they'll be going in and basically putting a cap inside the tank to block off that water tank so we can replace the connection, the shutoff, shut that water off so we can do the work on man lot road. That's going to take place on Monday and Tuesday. That will cause disruptions in the system. The plant will run 24 hours a day while the tank is offline to maintain system pressure. But as you can imagine, that is going to change the hydrology in the entire system without that tank online. So that will cause brown water to stop popping up in different places around town as the pressure comes from the plant instead of the tank. Once that is done, Wednesday and Thursday next week, we'll start the flushing program. We'll be doing a unidirectional flushing program, which basically means we'll be flushing in the same direction all the time, so we're always flushing from clean to dirty and not bringing dirty into clean. That will start at the end of next week. That will be an aggressive program. Uh, that will also cause instances of brown water in the areas where we are doing the flushing. Those will be posted on our website. And we will also put up signs in the neighborhoods that are being affected to let people know we will be doing flushing in those neighborhoods. But next week and the week after, people should expect to see outbreaks of brown water as we get on top of the stuff. Uh, the ice picking then will commence in October. And those will be some of the bigger lines, again, that are too big for us really to get the velocity necessary to flush. And we'll be doing those. So the water department is going to be doing a lot the next couple <coughs> weeks. Uh, I think they're excited for how well this is going to work. The reservoir is still fairly full. So we will flush until we can't flush anymore and then we will pick it up again in the spring wherever we left off to make sure that we're flushing those pipes out good. But this should have a very good impact on the brown water once we get past what we're going to cause over the next couple of weeks. Any questions on the water? Yeah, if we can just get posted on the website the areas that will impact. Yep, it will and be. And just so people understand flushing, we basically open up a main and rush the water through it so all that silt gets pumped out out of the system completely and that's yep. one of the reasons why it's built up because we haven't flushed for a number of years so because um, we have in the water too in some cases right. we didn't have the water and some of the pipes are so old if we too. flush the pipes would break Sean time of the day is it uh, let me check with Kevin I believe they're gonna be flushing at night but I'll double check if we really could because yep. no matter what you do people just they don't they're busy and they don't see the signs and I know it's overtime but a lot less activity in the middle of the night let me double check Thank you. Uh, so that's the brown water. I just have one, have one more request. <laughs> Sorry. Can we make sure that um, we're doing multiple postings, not just one that says on Monday and Tuesday? So, like every day, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. I, I think the plan is that they're going to post, we're going to be flushing. Tomorrow we're going to be flushing. Then we're going to be flushing. So, yeah. Yeah, and even the sequence. man lot thing, if we can post that more than once. That's gone out a couple times. It's gone to the man lot residence a couple times, and that'll go back out again before next week. Okay, awesome. Thanks. Yep. One other point I want to bring up is... Also, sorry, uh, Kevin actually did a video with Seth today mm -hmm. on that, uh, on the Man Lot project and that water tower project, so that'll be up by the end of the week, too. Great. Um, have we made any progress on the filtration program, the home filtration? That's next on That's my next. list. <laughs> any other that will be before you for next meeting. That's what I anticipate that'll be ready for the next meeting. Okay. That's my goal. 
Karen? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> um, to your left. To your just right. two, two quick questions. Do you have an? Do you, off the top of your head, know what the uh, t gallons per day is about right now? I mean, I know what the peak was. I'm wondering if we're down a lot. You don't know? No, we can find out, but I believe it's down substantially by this time. And do we, in the event that the flushing program does break pipes, which it might do if we find one that was sensitive we didn't know, um, do we have that, bud like a contingency budget in there? Yeah, so we we, I mean, we always have money to fix pipes. Um, okay. <laughs> with the exception of some of the pipes on Manlot, um, the pipes we're going to replace on Manlot, some of those are 14-inch pipes. And the only place to get 14-inch pipes is to go to the manufacturer and have them make them. Hmm. So we're going to be replacing those with actually stock pipes. Um, but for the most part, if it's a five-inch pipe, we have five-inch pipes in stock. So if it's a 12-inch pipe, we have pipes in stock. So if something happens, we're ready for that. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Uh, elementary question: Where does the brown water go when it gets flushed out? Does it go through the hydrant system, or where does it go? That's why you're flushing. You go to the woods. It goes into the sewer. It okay. goes. It depends really where you're flushing. Where it's you not it. enough to send the sewer system. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Okay. Next. Uh, high school fields. The uh, high school stadium field remains on schedule for the Thanksgiving Day football game. If you go out there now, you can see the uh, drain um, around the inside of the track. So that delineates the inside of the track. Everything inside will be the field and the D-rings. Uh, as I said last week, the track is at sub base. That's ready to go. They'll start putting the base in hopefully this week. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the big thing was the trench across the parking lot out back here. Had to get down by last week. That's where the power is coming in off the poles. We got that done on time. Uh, we also had some pipe that had to be removed from the baseball and softball fields uh, that we knew was there. We weren't aware that it was transite pipe, but we knew the pipe was there. So we had to bring it to the disposal company. That's out of the way. So that project up in the top is now catching up. We're just about out of the ground up top. We're already pretty much out of the ground down the bottom. What does that mean? Well, once you stop digging, most of your unknowns now are covered. Uh, you find your unknowns when you're digging. So if we can get out of that upper field right now without finding anything really bad at this point, we'll be in good shape. But as of right now, we are on time and on budget for those fields. Good. Great. So that's the November for the football field? Yep. Mm -hmm. And Spring. Spring for spring. spring, like March, April. Yeah. If you can. What's Depends the weather going to be like, really, is what it's going to turn. Really right now it's April, but if we have a good winter, they can work on winter. If we have a bad winter, yeah. they can't. Um, the, the pavement for the track surface right now is scheduled for the end of September. That takes 30 days to cure. Uh, and then you have the track company come in and, and put down the actual track surface. We'll be able to get that in before the cold weather hits. It's really going to be weather dependent. That might not get put down out of the spring, depending on what happens weather-wise. But the actual track surface, the concrete, or the pavement, we'll get on by the end of the month. Any questions about that? Mm -hmm. uh, the plastic bag ban went into effect September 1st. We sent letters in January. We sent another letter in August to all the businesses reminding them of that. Uh, the EDC purchased 2,500 bags like the ones you see in front of you, and those were distributed to various businesses around town, depending on the business was how many they got. Uh, our senior volunteer did that, very well received, and the businesses were very happy with that. But as of right now, no more plastic bags in the town of Situate. So that is in effect at this point. They can still, I believe, well, they can still use whatever they have left. Um, that was from so no, so now they're done. That's done. Done. So no more plastic bags. So if you go shopping in Situate, you have to bring your own bag or use paper. Good. Uh, and finally, uh, school started today. Yay. Uh, kids are all back. Uh, we spent a lot of time watching the traffic out here today. We thought it was going to be a lot worse than it was in the middle school and high school now have pretty close to the same starting time. Uh, Chief Stewart and Chief Deputy Chief uh, Thompson were very actually pleased. It wasn't anywhere near as bad as we thought. We do have backup on First Parish, uh, but that existed before when we had it, so that doesn't seem to be any worse than it was. It goes almost back to Shones, but it's moving the entire time, so uh, we didn't anticipate really any big problems. They were actually much better than we thought. So at this point, good luck to the students, the faculty, and the staff for another year at Central Public Schools, and they were off and running. I got no complaints today, so they got off on a good start, best I can tell. That's all I got for today. Any questions for Jill? Just on that, um, just remind me what the status of the, the uh, crossing light on 3A? 
the bane of my existence, the crossing light on three. We awarded a contract for that yeah. in July. Uh, the contractor was not very responsive. Uh, Sean McCarthy has been badgering him because I've been badgering Sean. Uh, about two weeks ago, Sean and I sat down and said, send him a letter. If we don't hear from him by the end of the day today, we're going to cancel the contract and go with the next bidder. Uh, since then, he's been very responsive. Uh, I don't have a date when it's going to go in, but I'm expecting it to go in fairly shortly. Otherwise, we're going to switch contracts. We've had enough waiting for this. Mm, I actually told Sean to go out and dig a hole. It just looks like we're doing something. Just dig a hole by the side. Any other questions for Jim? Okay. I don't think we got the answer to the filtration system. He said next week, next week. they're going to have I hope that for the next okay. meeting, have a policy for the next okay, meeting. Okay, thank you. Great. Didn't hear that. Everyone else good? That's because Tony went out of order. <laughs> Okay, great. Moving right along then. Um, before we get to the proclamation that we're about to read, I want to just um, skip forward quickly to let me get the time the Cedar Point sewer item. Gosh, at um, 9:05, just in case anyone's here. So um, we voted a quick. 30 second summary. So last meeting we voted on whether we were going to put a low pressure or a gravity felt system up in um, the Cedar Point area. It was a tough vote and it ended up being 3-2 in favor of a gravity system. Within hours of the vote, um, Ms. Conley emailed me and said that she um, was having second thoughts on her decision. Um, and it's a big decision. So what we did at that point in time is I called Jim the next morning and said just stop canceling the contract and let's wait and see let Ms. Conley have you know another couple weeks to get the information that she needed we put it on the agenda that we were going to reconsider it and since that time Ms. Conley's done her um, research and decided not to reconsider the um, motion so if you're here for that you don't have to sit through two hours <laughs> of meeting um, because that is not going to be reconsidered tonight Karen I don't know if you want to add anything to that well I just want to say you know for myself, it was an extremely hard decision because you're trying to balance the needs of a neighborhood and the wants of a neighborhood versus what is right for the whole town. And it was a significant amount of money. And so when I got home that night, I kept thinking, I don't know, I don't know. It, it could have gone one way or the other for me. And so I asked, could we reconsider the question? And the answer was yes, we could. So I asked to put it, have it put on the agenda to give myself selfishly time to make sure I made the right decision and after a lot of soul searching and I know it sounds crazy but I didn't think about much else for the 10 days after that meeting about what was the right thing to do and after a lot of research and a lot of talking to different people I came to the conclusion that I had indeed made the right decision at that time um, there are still a lot of questions the biggest one of which is the issue of how much the betterment is going to cost the town has about $4.4 million to put toward the project through uh, a Mass Works grant and through money that was allocated by town meeting in, I think it was 2017. Um, the residents are, they understand, I believe they understand that they're going to have to pay the difference between the money that we have allocated and what the bid comes in for a gravity system. And they agree. Now, I will caution everyone who's out in Cedar Point, uh, there are some numbers being thrown around and they're not right. So um, I think everyone just has, just has to wait for the uh, system to be designed and the bids to come in and then they're going to have to, you know, live with what those consequences are. But the community felt so strongly and, um, you know, I hope I made the right decision, uh, but I feel confident now that I did. So, and I thank everyone for their patience, especially the, uh, the town hall people because I know it wasn't easy for them so great so if you're here for that that is uh, not going to be changed um, moving right along um, we have a proclamation the uh, daughters of the American Revolution we do have a public hearing at 715 so oh. we probably need to do that now. okay let's do that first ah. so we're going to uh, come back to that at as soon as we're done with this public hearing. So at 7.15, we have a, a public hearing on community choice aggregation program. Um, would you like to come up is, where is um, Lisa? To the right. Just, we're kind of here in her stead. Okay. <laughs> we're, we're on the committee. Okay. You want to come up? You don't have to. This is scary. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
He's lonely. <laughs> <laughs> so this on, is Dale. actually um, the public hearing for yes. people to voice um, their opinions about, or their, their questions about this um, program. We had a write-in period mm -hmm. for most of the month of August, I believe, and you'll tell us what you received for that. And then um, this is the um, open meeting for people to come and discuss the aggregation program, which is um, trying to aggregate our energy bills. Um, for the town to get more green energy and hopefully get a lower rate for the residents. Is that a good summary? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I'll pass it over to you. Okay, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Mr. Town Administrator, um, thank you for letting us come before you tonight uh, for the public hearing. Uh, essentially, during the, uh, uh, the last month that you opened up uh, the period for public review, uh, any written comments that came in will be made part of the plan that goes to the Department of Energy Resources. Uh, any comments that are um, given tonight by residents uh, will be in obviously in the minutes and those minutes will also be part of the plan that goes to the Department of Energy Resources. The reason why it's, it's this two week or at least this two week period is because that's what the, uh, the Department of Public uh, Utilities wants. Uh, but essentially any time during the period between now and when the plan is approved, okay, and certainly uh, right now you have a period that will go for uh, six to eight weeks at the Department of Energy Resources uh, and a period of after that once a consultation letter is given by them, uh, then it will be about a six to nine month period while the plan is at the Department of Public Utilities. And during any of that time, uh, uh, comments can be submitted and they'll become part of the documentation. So although you had this formal period uh, of about a month, uh, any time residents want, they can comment on the documentation. Great. So, um are you going to tell us any of the written feedback that you got tonight, or is that just going to be in the documents that go to the EB? I haven't seen any written oh, you haven't. written uh, feedback. Okay. So why don't you want me to open it up to the audience or to you guys first? I'd say the audience. Okay. This is a public so hearing, this right? is a public meeting for you to comment and ask questions on this program. Is anybody here to ask any questions on that? Yes, ma'am. Maybe you can just give your name and address. Jane Shelton, 511 Haverly Road. Um, I would just like to see this project kind of move the town forward in terms of renewable, renewable energy and add on to the solar panels that we have and the wind turbine and mm -hmm. um, increase our use of renewable energy as much as possible, 100% would be great as far as I'm concerned. Do we know, is there a certain percentage that we're aiming for or hoping to get or when will we know that and when will this all come? I'll also just Logistically, when will this all take place, actually? Okay. The, the plan that has been written for the town has three, three alternatives. The first is the standard or the default, which has an additional 10% more renewable energy than is required by the Commonwealth, which uh, in this year is 14%. No matter where you get your electricity from, you'll have 14% of that electricity generated by renewable sources. So. Right now, the plan says 10% above that for the default option. You can go down to the basic, okay, which is, again, 14%, uh, or up to 100%. And that's the way the plan is written. But there's flexibility in the plan based on the market at the time um, the town goes out to a competitive bid. Uh, that can change. It could be more than 10%, depending upon the market for renewable energy certificates at the time. But right now, uh, most of the towns that we're dealing with uh, are looking at somewhere between 5 and 10% for that standard or default option with a basic option and a 100% renewable option. Does that mean the plan goes into effect and individual <coughs> customers get to choose? That's correct. Those plans? Yes. Yeah. And that gives 
that that is uh, the plan that seems to be most popular because it gives everybody a choice in terms of, of how much uh, renewable energy they, they want in the mix for their, their own uh, consumption. Can I just clarify that for one second? Sure. So your, everyone's bill is going to change to the default if you're currently with National Grid, and then you'll have the option to defer one way or the other or out completely. Right. After the, after the competitive bid, a letter will go out to all of um, uh, those customers on the, def the basic service of National Grid. It'll explain the whole program. It'll explain the options. It'll explain which one they're put into if they don't want to do anything. And that will be that standard option. If they want something else, uh, they can either go to the website or they can call the supplier and they'll be put into one of the other options. So the, the standard option is 24% mm -hmm. or that's the base. It do would nothing, be 10% above the 14, 14 now. added to that so 14, which would be 24%. Okay, yes. at the yeah. base level. And then if they choose to go more. They can go to 100% right. or they can come down to the 14% for those people who think that, that that's plenty. And certainly for those people on fixed incomes that don't want any more uh, than, you know, any more renewable energy. And that, that basic is uh, an apples to apples comparison uh, with the national grid uh, basic service. Any other questions from the audience? Okay, I'll open up to the board. Any questions from the board? Can I just get clarification on that last one? So is national grid at 24% right now? No, national grid is at 14%. 14%. That's the basic. Yes. Okay. Any, anybody, you know, either National Grid or any competitive supplier that you may have at this point in time has to have 14% renewable energy in their fuel mix. It had to go up 2% a year. And, es and essentially that 14% that had been going up at 1% a year. Next year it'll go up 2% and 2% thereafter each year. Uh, so when you're ready, uh, to go out to bid in 2020, okay, you're going to have a 16% base plus 10% above or maybe more depending upon what the market is at the time. And that's, you know, that, that's, a, that's a good number. But just a question. Is there enough renewable energy out there to satisfy the demand that's likely to be created by these types of programs? <coughs> We use uh, Green Energy Consumers Alliance because essentially um, the renewable energy certificates we get from them uh, are from sources that are local sources here in uh, Massachusetts, uh, Rhode Island, and Maine. Um, they don't include anything that's biomass or anything that has uh, that situation. There's no uh, New York recs in there. There's no Canadian recs there. Totally class one Massachusetts. Uh, basically, we call them preferred recs because they come from um, non remitting sources, non emitting emitting sources. And there's enough of that around? Uh, we, we actually we had a meeting in Boston today with the Green Energy Consumers Alliance and basically said, you need to get us more. And they're out. They're out. They're looking for more they're looking renewable for more. sources. Yes. Okay. Because we're, we're, we're pushing the demand for those. From Obviously, them. yeah, so and the more this goes on, the more. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Good. I'm good. 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 Uh, yes, ma'am. Just your name and address. Yeah, Janice Desmond, seven years on track. Um, I'm afraid I'm completely um, ignorant to your, your um, committee, but from what you're saying, what's the impact to the um, to the resident? You're saying. Well, well, certainly the impact to the residents. We, we try to do two things with the program. We try to lower the electricity rates, for one thing, and we try to bring more renewable energy into the mix. So it's both a, an economic and environmental win. Okay. And that satisfies, that satisfies just about everybody. Probably more expensive than the standard. Yes. So uh, just to, my, my only thoughts on this, I think it's a great program. My concern all along was that all of the residents with National Grid are automatically going to change to this program. So it is not an opt-in program, it's an opt-out program. So 
but our hopes are that you're going to be getting a better rate than you have right now anyway, so it'll be beneficial. If it's a higher rate, one, we don't have to do it, correct? That's and right. two, um, you'll have the ability to call up and change it and go to any aggregator or back to National Grid if you want. Um, but um, again, our hopes are that we'll get more green and we'll get less, less cost to the residents. Um, wait, if nobody has, uh, does the committee want have any input? Uh, just one, one thing. Just give your name. And Kathy yeah. Cerruti. Um, and also they'll have the option that they come in at, at the standard, they'll have an option of, of going down as well, staying in and actually going down to save money as well. With, with, within the program, um, customers can choose to go to the standard. They can come down to basic. They can go up to 100% within the program. Yeah. Great. Mm -hmm. All right. So, uh, yes, Scott. Scott Greenbaum, 40 Damon Road. Uh, the people on Hammerock, this will apply to them, and they are on Eversource, not on National Grid electricity. It will apply to them as well. Yes. Yes, it will. Okay. It will. So yes. they may have a different rate than the people that are here in point. the rest of town, but there will be a comparison to whatever National Grid is doing. I mean, whatever Eversource is doing. So, <coughs> And the other thing is it's kind of obvious that the 100% program will be more expensive than what you're paying now but the people opting into that will, should understand that but i don't want anybody to be surprised that they opt in and then they go oh it's more expensive than i just want to make sure that everybody's but they're clear. not opting in at the 100 percent rate no they would have to opt in yeah. to the 100 percent right but that's what i mean it's not defaulting it's to decision that. yeah yeah and i have to i have to mention one other thing related if i can are you all done scott yeah, yeah. yeah. So Kathy Stewart again, 65 Brook, and actually people like me who uh, are with National Grid but are currently like getting an additional green component will actually save money by probably going 100% because the National Grid version is so expensive right now. So that's a good Sean? I was just going to ask a question. Would this have any effect on a resident that might have a great, good application for solar panels? Would, it, would, the, would the process be any easier, more difficult? We have nothing to do with it. You know, there's a few residents out there that have for, done it. For, the, for those residents that have solar panels, right. they have a, a separate net metering agreement with National Grid that's totally independent of the aggregation. Okay. Whatever, whatever they use from the grid that's conventional electricity, okay, would come from the aggregation. They still have the same deal that they have with, uh, with National Grid uh, for their net metering. And, and essentially, again, any, any residents that are on a discount program, those programs stay in place. That's good to know. Great. All right, so is the next step we just read um, the legal notice and then? You, you, can, you can just, um, you know, vote to uh, uh, submit the plan to uh, the Department of Energy Resources. Okay. 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 Okay, so all right, do I have a motion then to uh, close the public hearing? Move to close the public hearing on the review process of the community choice aggregation plan. Second. Second by Ms. Kern. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 So we've closed the um, public hearing portion. And um, can I have a motion to approve? The aggregation plan move to approve the community choice aggregation plan and submit to the department of energy resources <laughs> doer to start the regulatory process second second by ms canfield further discussion seeing none all in favor aye. Aye. aye 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 it's unanimous do we have to read this lorraine it says to be read at <coughs> Yep. Yeah, we already read it at the last meeting. Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Great. Thank you guys for coming in. Thank you. Thank you. And you'll be back in touch with us as we hit the next <coughs> steps. Absolutely. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. It was well. Good night. Good night. Back to our regularly scheduled programming. <laughs> Moving right along. Okay. We're going to go back now to the proclamation. Yep. For the uh, Daughters of the American Revolution. And I know we have to read this. Yes. <laughs> Madam Clerk. 
be happy to. Snellen, thank you for coming up. Um, it's my privilege to get to read the uh, proclamation concerning the Daughters of the American Revolution. Uh, whereas the Daughters of the American Revolution, founded by women in 1890 during a revival of patriotism and intense interest in the beginnings of the United States of America to perpetuate the memory of ancestors who fought to make our country free and independent. Whereas the Daughters of the American Revolution is one of the largest patriotic women's organizations in the world and continues to foster love of country and to cherish, maintain, and extend the institutions of American freedom and to aid in securing for mankind all the blessings of liberty. Whereas the Daughters of America Revolution strives to promote historic preservation, education, and patriotism via commemorative events, scholarships, and educational initiatives, citizen programs, service to veterans, meaningful communi community service, and more. Whereas the Daughters of Revolution, American Revolution celebrates Constitution Week from September 17th to the 23rd, 2019, an annual commemoration of the living document that upholds and protects the freedom central to our American way of life. Whereas the Chief Justice, Justice Cushing chapter joins the National Society of the Daughters of the American Revolution in advocating for awareness, promotion, and celebration of Constitution Week to emphasize our responsibility to protect, defend, and preserve the Constitution. Now therefore, we, the Board of Selectmen for the Town of Situate, congratulate the Chief Justice Cushing Chapter of the Daughters of the American Revolution on this patriotic observance. Further, we appreciate that Justice Chief Justice Cushing chapter for being active in local affairs since its, since its founding in 1905 and for carrying the torch of patriotism. It's signed this third day of September by the Board of Selectmen. And it's my privilege to present this to you. <coughs> you want to say anything, Joan, or? <laughs> you good? No, she's running out. <laughs> you got all your swag on. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Joan. Thank you. Um, the next item that we're going to discuss is the South Shore Heritage Chair, Trail, excuse me, Brenda O'Connor, uh, who is chair of the Sister City Ireland Committee. Hi, Brenda. Hello. How are you? Very well, thanks to you. Uh, I've mentioned before in passing that we are planning a South Shore Her Irish Heritage Trail to begin in uh, Nantasket or how, uh, with John Boyle O'Reilly's summer home, which is now the public library there, and continue to the canal. Uh, we would like to have a preliminary meeting and invite members, a representative of the Board of Selectmen, Chamber of Commerce, Historical Commission in each town. Um, if we send the invitation for that from the Situate West Cork Committee outside of Situate, we have no standing. So we need to have the Board of Selectmen agree to be invitors so that when a Board of Selectmen in Plymouth and uh, Duxbury and Marshfield, et cetera, receives the letter, they will say, this is a Situate Board of Selectmen, and they know you have a certain standing and they will respond to that. The same is true of the Chamber of Commerce, the same is true of the Historical Society. So we are asking for each group to be signees to the invitation. We don't have a date, we don't have a place, we don't have anything yet, but we want a preliminary meeting to make a presentation on our vision and find out if people are interested. If they're not interested, we're not going to do the work of banging our heads against the wall. If they are interested, then we'll all work together and make this happen. We did not get, as far as I know, we got no, no, no notification, but I'm assuming we did not get the grant from the Irish government. But they are very interested in supporting this, and I think if we go ahead, they will give us a sizable grant. 
Did you already apply for a grant? We did apply for a grant for this preliminary meeting, sixteen hundred dollars. I mean, oh. They give five hundred thousand and fifty thousand. We only asked for that for presentation materials, and to get known <coughs> in Dublin. And uh, but I, I think I screwed up the application. If you want to know the <laughs> bottom line. <laughs> But uh, it won't happen for the big grant. <laughs> we'll be a lot more careful. But I think they'd be receptive. Um, so can you take 30 seconds and tell us what the vision is so that we, before we say we're going to support something, we understand? Sure. I'd be divided. Um, the, actually, everybody knows Situate is the uh, most Irish town in America. Well, it happens at the South Shore is the most Irish geographical section in America. And most of the towns have over 40 percent or close to it of Irish birth or heritage. And the Irish came here many years ago, some are still coming, and we want to celebrate the contributions these people made to the South Shore. We also want to, with a trail, develop a tourist des destination we want people who come and look at what we have to offer to have lunch here, to go shopping in our stores, and maybe even stay overnight. So I think it will be a, uh, a boom for the town. We already have our Mossing Museum, so we don't have to look high and low to have a place of attraction. We uh, will have the uh, Easter Rising Memorial in the harbor. Uh, somebody very bright suggested to me that in the, when we are planning the drive from the, uh, mapping out the trail, that we come through on Country Way right into North Situate. Uh, we can also determine we could go by James Michael Curley's house, Morris Tobin's house, John B. Hines' house, or uh, find out from the community any, any other places. But uh, so. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, Hal already has the John Boyle O'Reilly House. Cohasset already has the Break St. John's Memorial. Uh, I don't know what Hingham has, if they have a particular spot that they would identify, but it would be the uh, charge of each town to identify what they would want to celebrate. So the result would be a map, a kind of a tourist map that would go through several towns, um, highlighting exactly. Irish. Um, you know, participation in, in uh, plaques and um, what have you, houses or whatever, and then um, also in the effort of getting economic development and everyone's co That's right. Uh, great. And it'll and it go from, how, what's the area from like Quincy down to Plymouth? Is that <coughs> it the? Would, it, for now, it would start in Howell. It could move up if it's successful to um, Milton. The Forbes Museum in Milton has a uh, wonderful recognition of uh, Captain Forbes, who during the uh, potato famine uh, convinced the president to uh, give him a retired Navy ship, and he brought that full of food to Cork Harbor. And the people in Cork gave a huge uh, tray in, as a thank you. So that would be, especially with our association with West Cork, would be a wonderful beginning also. Um, and we could eventually, my dream would be to go to New Bedford, where um, the Catalpa, which is a whole other story I won't even bother to go into, but would be a great celebration of a whaling ship that rescued Irish prisoners from Australia. Oh. Any questions from the board? No, sounds like mm -hmm. a Any Ooh. good idea. Do I get a sense of the board that they would support this? Yes. yes. Uh, a question, is the Irish consulate been? Very, very supportive. Mm -hmm. Could um, they be on the invitation, perhaps, as um, a sponsoring? That's good idea. Well, I'm, I'm sure that uh, they would be willing to do whatever we would need them to do. And this is the, this would be the third uh, consul general in a row that has supported it. Mm -hmm. So they're pretty solid behind it. Right. So the next step would be for? Just us to request maybe Lorraine to draft a letter or you could send Lorraine uh, a draft. We could work on it together and with the Chamber of Commerce and the so we send one letter with everybody's awesome. 
imprimatur. Yeah, so we'll do our part. You, you'll you have to talk to the other Thank areas. You. Great. And then I just want to uh, reiterate the uh, 914, we're having a fundraiser to support the student exchange scholarships uh, for the Situate West Cork Student Exchange. And that a delegation is coming from Ireland October 19th or after for a week. So uh, put your thinking caps on <laughs> as far as that goes. And I just wanted to let you know that this is the last uh, day of my chairmanship of the Situate West Cork no. Committee. <laughs> uh, we are having an election tomorrow at our meeting. And if uh, we don't have a surprise candidate, Siobhan Hunter, who is vice chair now, will become chair. And John Sullivan will become vice chair. Great. Thanks. Well, I just want to thank you for, for all the work you did. You were really a, um, a very positive force in getting everything done in terms of the trips and the relationships and organization. Um, you know, nothing but compliments from everybody that was involved. So thank you for your time. And you'll still be on the committee. I'm not and going into hiding, no. <laughs> from, uh, from the outside instead yes. of. Great. Yes. Thank, thank you, you for very much. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Brenda. Thank you. Thank you. We don't need to vote for that, right, Lorraine? You're good. All right. Moving right along, we have some outdoor permits to discuss and vote um, for Green Day at the Mann uh, Farmhouse. Well, they don't need to come in because you told them to. Yeah. Right. Okay. Does anyone have, have any questions on way. any of those items? Mm -hmm. um, what, what did we ask them to resolve? I think they hadn't really resolved their music at that time they had ideas yeah which it's resolved now okay we just didn't really we weren't didn't want to approve it because she was still in the planning stages right and this laid out the exact plan yeah okay. great so they're looking for a outdoor entertainment permit mm -hmm. um, for September 24th 21st First. from 12 p.m. until 3 p.m. for acoustic guitar and folk music mm -hmm. so moved second Second by Mr. Harris. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 It is unanimous. We're cruising. All right. Now we fun. have another anniversary, um, an outdoor permit for Untold Brewing. Matt, how are you? Hi, Matt. How's everybody? Very good. I can't believe it's two years already. I know. We <laughs> both. Time flies. I think it caught on. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So, Matt, you're here to ask us for a entertainment permit for um, Untold Brewing for your two-year anniversary. Is that correct? Yes, exactly. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the event? Yeah, it's really, we're going to try to recreate the success of last year's event. So, the plan is to uh, shut down the parking lot again to host food trucks, live music throughout the day. And it's really just an extension of you know, our serving area from inside the taproom only out uh, to the parking lot. So the idea is to rope it off. We'll repeat the shuttle service from the MBTA lot to help with the parking situation and get a police detail to help <laughs> keep cars off the streets and you know, keep everybody safe. And uh, we'll probably have music a little longer this time, but still within the usual operating hours that uh, we keep now. Uh, we might get two or three bands instead of just one. Uh, we're still working out the details, everybody, and then um, really just a repeat of what we did last year. Great. Um, were there any, Jim, do you know, were there any issues last year? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Just so parking obviously is the biggest right. concern. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but you'll have a police detail to direct people and mm -hmm. um, you just can't park on Country Way on that curve there. And right. Yeah, so the, the goal is to keep everybody off Old Country Way, keep right. you know, cars moving and uh, direct everybody up to the, the Is it um, Has it been approved to park in the MBTA parking lot, Jim? Can they Sorry. park in that parking lot? That check the MBTA that we have nothing to do with that. So, did you check with them to see if you can use the parking lot? We haven't. Um, we just instructed everybody that there's you know it is a lot that requires payment. So there's a fee. Oh, okay. As long as they're paying, it's fine. The yeah. team's not going to care. Okay. They don't ride the train or not. But yeah. Saturday is that what it is, Matt? Saturday, October twelfth. Right. Do they typically check the parking lot on Saturdays? That's they do. The risk, the risk they take to that. It's a reduced rate. All right. Good. All right. No question. Yeah, and more. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Matt, any, um, did you play as late last year till 10 p.m.? 
We had the band play till I think like nine thirty, and we're actually going to move okay, it up. Well, we're going to we're going to go seven to nine. Yeah. Okay. No, but, I mean, we moved everybody out of the parking lot as soon as <coughs> ten o'clock hit, and you know. Okay. That, that was when we closed anyway, so I started shuffling people out at that time. I don't think we don't have any abutters here, right? That are. I well, I'll ask. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, I will say a difference last year to this year. We got a lot of residents down there now, in those apartments that we didn't have last year. So I think um, the issue of people not parking in those spaces is probably sure. Yeah, we, we can instruct everybody like yeah. where not to park and yeah. you know, really yeah. uh, encourage point. everyone to use the. the well, and I would right just lots. ask the question. I mean, I know it's a Saturday Saturday night, isn't it? Um, that you know, people. Are living there now who weren't there last year so I don't know how many people are in the apartments at this point but what about you? I'm quite you might you might actually might want to flyer that whole yeah. complex just to let them know well, um, sure. yeah. well, because they're not used to they're used to having you there but they're not used to having you there this big yeah oh well, yeah we're happy to yeah. do that yeah that's a very good point we did, we did notify all the abutters um, that we were doing this and they probably weren't considered a butters though right right the, the, well, that and complex the, is not considered yeah. a butters no if you want but to be a good neighbor anyway Matt so it might be a good idea to Karen's point you know maybe a central location where you could drop off some flies just sure. no and like you said they're gonna come over and probably <laughs> enjoy it. Over. So. <laughs> advertising right yeah. right and it's not too too late 10 o'clock is yeah any other no thank mm -hmm. you no. anyone in the audience have any comments on the event at Untold. I just a comment. I was there last year for a little while, and it was not that loud. And uh, if it's anything like that, it just seemed like it was very well received. Yeah. So. Great. Thank Good luck. Thank you. All right. Can I have a motion then? Move to grant an outdoor entertainment permit to Untold Brewing, located at Six Old Country Way, for a band on Saturday, October 12, 2018, from 12 p.m. to 10 p.m. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 It is unanimous. Is Good luck. Well? We have to do the modulations. Yeah. Let me get there. It's in the same motion. Okay. Um, so now you, you want a one day wine and malt license um, to sell on the outdoor patio and parking lot from 12 to 10 p.m. on the same day? Yes. Any questions on that? Nope. I have a motion. Move that the Board, board of Selectmen approve a one-day malt license to Untold Brewery, Brewing, sorry, Six Old Country Way for a second year anniversary celebration using the outdoor patio and parking lot on October 12, 2019 from 12 p.m. to 10 p.m. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. Aye, it is unanimous. Good luck. Thank you very much. Congratulations, you. too. Yeah. <coughs> Okay, now we have another outdoor entertainment permit, and this is for an outdoor permit application by Rue Graham, the Voyager of the Voyage. Hi. <laughs> how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm good. So what do you want to do? So we want to make this in conjunction with the Alice's House event. They do their road race on Sunday, October 20th, and we did this last year, got the tent in the parking lot. Um, we want to kind of do it like we did for St. Patrick's Day, just do the four-day event for the tent like we did then so we can do like maybe a comedy night and a murder mystery night and something else that we can have more people out there and then the runners come in and pick up their jerseys on Sunday and do their sign up and then they'll come all come back to the tent afterwards. Okay, so four days? Yep. I see October 17, 18, and 19. It's supposed to be and 20. And 20, I'm sorry, different times for 20. Got it. So my first thought was four days, that seems like a lot of time to be doing this till 11 o'clock at night to the residents. And then my wife pointed out to me that there's probably not a lot of residents there in October. They leave so, then. <laughs> um, so I don't know what your guys' thoughts are on. Well, she did last year, yeah. so I don't think we yeah. had any complaints to we my knowledge. Do, no. Did we do four right. days for We this? did four days yeah. on St. Patrick's Day. St. Yeah. Patrick's Day. Yep. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, yeah. Right. So the same, probably about the, the, same, same. Kind, yeah. the same kind of event. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you're just going to have 
entertainment or some sort of dinner or some sort of activity every night outside. Yeah. And then uh, closing at, a le so is that a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday? Correct. And I believe is that Sunday, is that um, Columbus Day weekend? It is. It yes. is. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so, so holiday. Yeah. yeah, so do you need 11, I'm, again, I'm just, so do you need 11 o'clock on the Thursday night? I'm just thinking if there's kids that are going to school and I don't know what you're doing that Thursday night. Yeah, I mean, they're really, we don't really have any houses around us at all that people live there, there no kids in the winter right. time. <laughs> so. I don't know, what do you guys think? If there are any of butters, I don't have a, you know. Yeah. Well, there are yeah. houses. So, yeah, but I mean. Some residents. They've done it before, and it's been well received. And, and the you know all of the kinks I think were worked out. The parking was the thing we were concerned about last year. Right, and the Davises gave us permission again for their lot this year for the for the event. So we also have that. Okay, so no one has concerns about the hours. No. Parking? Are we good on parking? Mm -hmm. okay. I, I have a question. Go ahead. Um, the only thing I would ask um, is I don't understand what your capacity is for that tent. Um, and if the fire chief needs to sign off on that, looking over at Jim, because um, last year I thought the tables were a little tight, so I don't know if the chief goes in and signs off on your capacity for outdoors. He did. Okay. He came, he came over and signed off and signed off because we had the heaters in that. Right. Well, we're going to do a different way of setting it up because we learned from doing it on St. Patrick's Day so that it wouldn't be so, okay. so tight. In that there. would be my only comment. Okay. Thank you. Could I ask what is Alice's house? You give it a plug? Uh, yes, absolutely. Oh, Alice's house is a, a respite home from the beach there. One of the four houses that burnt down in 2012. Oh, yeah. So it, it was a, um, it's a uh, nonprofit. Um, it was a private residence over the years and turned into a nonprofit um, when the homeowner died and we created this home for people to come and just find rest and peace and going through some tragedy or conflict in their life. So it's been rebuilt through donations and fundraising and so we're trying to get this road race going every year. We've um, just about paid off our um, construction loan so we're just about right. debt free right now. Two years going so we're very happy. It's going very well um, but the road race is going to be a yearly thing so it's just a nice uh, commemorative tribute thing to do every year and it's really it's very much a family thing and the voyage has been very generous hosting and being one of our premier um, sponsors it's nice to keep it in the neighborhood it it's nice yeah. to be in view of the house because it's right there at that's the great opening and to have the families come there. I had never heard of it so, so yeah look at wonderful houseshouse.org wonderful Thank you. Didn't you just receive a grant as well? We gotten a few, yes. Yes. So, so congratulations. We just had a big event at the uh, River Club Wednesday night. That went very, very well. Great. Yeah. Good stuff. Nope, that is it. Thank you. <coughs> Great. And um, I don't know if Columbus Day is that weekend or the next weekend or the weekend before, but regardless, I don't think it impacts. Um, I think it's that weekend. Is that that weekend? Is it the 10th? Fourteenth. Is it? Um, great. Anybody from the audience have any comments? None from the board? Okay. Can I have a motion? Move to grant an outdoor entertainment permit to Rue Graham, uh, also Keith O'Callaghan. The Voyage, located at 14 Marshfield Avenue in Humrock, for a celebration with live music and entertainment on October 17th through the 19th from 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. in October 20th, 2019, from noon time till 8 p.m. Second. Second by Ms. Curran. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. We, we have another one? We have to do the, the malt um, license. The malt. Wine and malt. Okay. Move uh, that the Board of Selectmen oh. approve a one day wine and malt license to the Voyage Restaurant for celebration in the outdoor tent on the premise for Thursday. October 17th, 2019 through Sunday, October 20th, 2019 from 12 p.m. to 12 a.m. Second. Um, second by Mr. Harris. Further discussion? So the alcohol be served till midnight on all of those nights? Yeah, I mean, if it quiets down, it's just so that we can get people right. back inside or... 
Do you always have it that late? Is it? Ours is Sunday? 1 a.m. It is on Sundays as well? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, for the discussion, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Great. Great. Thanks. I will give you a quick Make plug. sure you come. <laughs> I was at your restaurant on Sunday. They have live music on Sunday. The food is fabulous. The restaurant looks great. It was packed. Um, so the Irish session is yes. every Sunday from so, four to seven. So that's a lot of fun for yeah. everybody. Go to the beach. Come off the beach. Go in there. It was a great time. So kudos. Good, <laughs> Good luck you. on your Congratulations. event. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now moving right along to the Council on Aging bylaws. You are on time. Look at you. Cruising. <laughs> Don't say that out loud. <laughs> Superstitious. Hi, Linda. That's it. Hi. 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 All right. So we have been given all of your backup. We have all read. <laughs> yeah. Have you? All of your changes all and all of your suggestions. All right. I, I know that. Um, if you can give us a summary, but you don't have to go through all the details. We've read it, and I know people have comments and things for you to add, and we'll we'll dive into it after that. Oh. Of course, you know me. I did bring Janice Desmond, um, one of our board members, who really um, managed the subcommittee. So you know, the board had discussed wanting to review them, having seen the old bylaw document for the Council on Aging, and the language was archaic. And you know, they had some ideas wanted to discuss. So JD, as chair, decided, you know, let's have a subcommittee and review it, which they did really largely last year. But then somehow we waited until maybe a more convenient time. And it didn't really turn out that way. And then, of course, I met with Jim in anticipation of this and then um, realized that the general bylaws had to correspond to the document that we were trying to revise. So then it was a little bit more um, of a push because then, of course, we needed to get on the special town meeting warrant. So here we are for that. Um, but um, really, I think there's some good um, ideas and highlights um, for this to happen but do you want to talk about yeah so we we got the kind of the semantic part yeah, of it and changing yeah. the yeah. wording that was kind of dated yeah um, some, exactly yeah. some dated language right. that we wanted to update wanted to align these with the overall town bylaws and <coughs> I think the, the really the most significant change mm -hmm. that we wanted to add associate members right. and non-voting associate members up to three for up to a you know, two-year term and I think, you know, certainly this year and past years I've seen many more candidates coming before you. So I think there's a, you know, large interest. We could use those people to work with us, certainly on all the projects that we have upcoming. So I think that would be an opportunity to see if somebody's interested in, in being a board member, prospectively. We would have people, <coughs> potentially, who have good experience and working with the Council on Aging, understanding all the programs, who could move into board positions. So that was really, um, you know, one of the main, the yeah. most significant yes. that needed yeah. to be incorporated mm -hmm. into the town bylaws as yeah. well as our bylaws. Um, we also have a mission statement that we included as part of our bylaws, and our bylaws is, are really guidelines of the town bylaws, so mm -hmm. they sort of expand a little bit on those succinct mm -hmm. bylaws that you have. And um, we mm -hmm. wanted to include the mission statement. We also wanted to include um, the age-friendly community status that had been given to the town because that was really through the board, the uh, Council on Aging that uh, that came around. So those are really mm -hmm. uh, the largest changes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we have, you, you know, you can see the red line, yeah. small changes, yeah. made, but I don't think any of those are significant Good. well I'm gonna open up the board because I know everybody has a few little questions and edifications right. here and there um, more do you want to start or um, sure I have a couple questions and thank you for doing this it was very thorough and very easy to follow where your changes were so I want to say thank you for that <laughs> that was good um, so one thing that I a couple of things the nominating committee I think I made a note here Mm -hmm. um, what was your reason for not requiring like a minimum number of meetings for them to attend because some committees will have like you can't you seem to be very focused on your your composition your makeup which is great mm -hmm. so wondering why you didn't put something in here to request minimum attendance mm -hmm. a lot of committees will have like you can't miss more than three meetings or you know you can't miss more than four whatever that number is 
We yeah, saw, we, we didn't actually, know if you discussed that. Um, we went down that road. We did. We did. I mean, so really, when I did these um, bylaw updates, I yeah. took a, a wide number of town mm -hmm. um, bylaws, mm -hmm. kind of did a comparison uh, to what we had, to what the overall um, yeah. town bylaws were. Um, looked at some other towns, and I all look. There's some very gene There's a generic bylaw that the state of Massachusetts mm -hmm. puts out to give you know recommendations. So utilized all of those. Um, I, I think in practice we didn't. Um, we did have some members who were not able to make some, a few meetings. You know whether it was for having a child, uh, sure. which is what, you know, the case. Um, vacationing. Things that I think Work. in, in today, yeah, today's world are maybe weren't as, um, uh, that didn't exist as much, maybe from the 1999 bylaws that we updated, which, okay. I, which did have reference to, you have to ex, you know, attend X number of meetings. Okay. So we did pull that out. I think we encouraged attendance in there, but we did yeah. leave it a little vague, a little. And Okay, that's fine. And then I'm uh, just curious. And then just two other notes because I'll let other people bring mm -hmm. up their questions. But um, any consideration to move the meeting to a sixth? I mean, you're, you're very specific that it's at 5:30 mm -hmm. p.m. That makes it really difficult for working adults. And right. in in my opinion, I know part of your um, mm -hmm. <coughs> characteristics are the majority of the committee needs to be made up of 55 and older. Mm -hmm. People are still working after 55, mm -hmm. oh, you know, for sure. For sure. lots of us. So, and it's really hard to get mm -hmm. and participate at 530. So that's my other request is that you would reevaluate maybe moving it to 630. I understand yeah. you don't want to be seven, eight, again, because of no, the composition. I think that's a great recommendation. But 530 is really early. <laughs> We've discussed that because some have had trouble getting there and Janice is only just retired and so she had at one point. But, um, and I think that was me in the beginning to tell you the truth, thinking that the makeup would be different and, yeah. and it wasn't necessarily. Yeah. I, I think that's a great recommendation and I think we should. Uh, can we still do that if it's in the heat here now? Usually it, that's not part of the bylaw that you set the yeah. time. You don't the have meeting. to do it to be that yeah. specific. Yeah. Yeah. Second yeah. Thursday. Yeah. Normally it just says it that the, they will, yeah, the board will meet once a month typically. You can even say typically on a, the whatever, but you Because the more restrictive be you make it, yeah. the, the more yeah. of an opportunity or mm -hmm. chance that it's going to be violated and somebody might call you out on it, yeah. right? Okay. Right, right. Yeah. And then I'll, I'll defer to other people yes. who I know have comments too, I'm sure. Sure. But those yeah. were two so of the things. I would recommend taking all that out because okay. you guys may be gone and Wednesday night mm -hmm. becomes the night that everyone can make it or whatever so it's okay yeah. that's, that's yeah. true Karen do you have any yeah I just a general comment about mm -hmm. the issue of attendance having run mm -hmm. a few committees um, mm -hmm. you know to the extent you make people understand that their attendance is expected and that there are certainly excused abs absences so you can have a situation where someone is ill and they can't make five meetings in a row but that's an excused absence mm -hmm. um, so, and I know the town bylaw does have a, a statement as to how many meetings you can miss. Yeah. There's, it, it's one of, it's somewhere. Yeah. Um, and I believe those bylaws would override. They the, do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They do. Yeah. That's good yeah. point. We found that out. Yeah. <laughs> so, so to the extent that you should be mm -hmm. in line with what the uh, the town bylaw says about mm -hmm. absences and you know when you can dismiss a person and nobody likes to tell someone they can't be on the committee anymore but sometimes you get to that point I so mean, we could say you can miss two meetings or you yeah. you know would be expected to make the majority of meetings yeah and then you've got the issue of you know the chairman needing to call people to make sure he she has a quorum mm -hmm. so I, I just think that you have to set the expectations about attendance and you know I don't mean to sound like a Thanks. stickler, but no, no. I thought we had more language on that. Though. Point taken. Karen? You want to go, Sean? No, you can go okay. first. Okay. Um, thank you for doing this, because I know, I mean, it. Oh. As, a, as a person who cares up deeply about words, to have this cleaned up really is good. Thank you uh, for reading it. <laughs> the um, comment that I had was on page seven, 
why does it say 706 okay that <laughs> well that was I think the original um, oh okay um, the last paragraph about the bylaws can be updated to reflect changes mm -hmm. in staffing and board membership on an ongoing basis yeah I don't think that's allowable is because it has to be a ch it has to be a town meeting approval just as we're going with these okay so I know what you're trying to say is yeah. some of it is expected to change on a regular basis potentially right? well the as staff. board membership change mm -hmm. oh well that actually that brings up a question is I don't recall any other board bylaws that mm -hmm. actually list the That's people it. and I think that uh, to the po same point the more general it is the more la longer the legs will be on this and you won't be because you you really can't so. change the bylaws without going okay. to a special town meeting okay. I mean materially so, so I would suggest okay. that you just say these are the mm -hmm. um, offices. Lorraine has. Yeah. Um, I just want to say they call them bylaws. They're not really the bylaws. They're regulations. They're, 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 they're bylaws. bylaws. They're, they're, regulations or procedures. So that should be changed <laughs> because okay. it's confusing to people, I think. Okay. The bylaws are only the town bylaws. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. And in that, that case, they could make changes. Whenever they want. With our approval. With right. the board. You could make changes whenever you want. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we'd come before you if the mission was, if we wanted to change the mission, we, yeah. we would come before you and that do that good. anyway. Okay. So. That was all I had. So just change, change the title as well then, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think maybe we're going to, if this makes sense, guidelines to the, to the, um, Policies to, to and the, procedures. To, to oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Council on bylaws. Aging Bylaws. Yeah. Well, so you're going to take bylaws out, right? Well, they're guidelines to the town bylaws. Oh, to the town bylaws. Okay. No. They're no. Well, no, they're not. Is that at all? No. No, that may not. No, they no. are. They are policies your and policies and procedures. Yeah. And that's the board of the are. council on aging. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Other org like the library trustees mm -hmm. approve their. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of policies and procedures for the library. Okay. And that's done through them. So. Okay. So we'll take yeah, a bylaw. Well, you can think about it a little bit more. Yeah. We would just well, recommend not yeah, putting bylaws in there. Yeah, Any of this is fine. I just, you yeah. know. Well, is it, does the state statute that started the Council on Aging, do they have a requirement that every Council on Aging has bylaws? Yes, actually. Or do they, have, do they say they want policies and procedures? They're bylaws. Yeah, I think they are bylaws. Um, and they, they're bylaws with, certain, with specific sections that very much fit what mm. we had. Hmm. So they have recommended mm. yeah. bylaws. They call them bylaws. They do. So I the think that needs some clarification. Yeah, I think, well, because I don't think they want to be confused with the town bylaws. Right. I, uh, the state doesn't understand the difference between their bylaws and our bylaws. They just call them bylaws. Right. But our bylaws are set by town meeting. There's, again, a more, it's more of a policy and procedure, but they call them bylaws. Yeah. And it does get confusing, but mm. so I guess we'd ask that you don't use the word bylaws, <laughs> okay. not to confuse people, because we can find some other way to refer to. Sure. So just out of curiosity, what about all the other um, boards in town? Do they have bylaws? No, no. I don't believe so. Some well, have policies well, some and procedures and understandings. The planning board has bylaws. The zoning board of appeals has bylaws, but they're passed by the town. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then okay. the selectmen yeah. have bylaws, and the selectmen have their operating policies and procedures that are different than bylaws. Like well, there's a bylaw to establish a situate council on mm -hmm. aging, but mm -hmm. there aren't bylaws to tell you how to operate them. Okay. Correct? Time to start. Right. right. So, yeah. Well, okay. you didn't know we had bylaws because they were done in 1999 and utilized by board. But anyway. Sean knew. No, they're just. <laughs> He's <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, I think it's. Sorry, we're getting Let's caught up on semantics yes. here. Uh, no. <laughs> Let Senior um, Member Harris. Speak. Please, Mr. Harris. No, we. I have no, I have no objections to calling them policies and procedures. That's okay. fine. Call them Tony's ideas. Um, Non-voting <laughs> members. Mm -hmm. Why can't they vote? Jim, Lorraine. Well, it doesn't mean it was a non-voting member. If, they if can't vote if they don't have a quorum. That could be in that. Then they be alternate. They then they be alternate. Then, then they're alternate members, not non-voting members. Not non-voting. Okay. Yeah. Is that what you really want? Non-voting members? I mean, if you had a problem reaching a quorum, call them alternates. And then they could vote if you don't right. have a quorum. I, I, think think I don't, I don't want to make it more confusing, but I just think <laughs> it's not had a quorum. We've never not had a quorum. That is All a good right. record. Um, 
I think it was made because the, the number had risen and become the, the seven to nine. And you want to get so, more people. You know, though we want more involved, we didn't necessarily want to, you know, really expand it to the point that you had that many votes. Yeah. But in the situation where you needed a quorum, that would be helpful. All right, you didn't like that idea. How about this one? <laughs> um, <laughs> instead of two years, <laughs> yeah, a awful one. All right, um, instead of two, how about three with the construction of the center and everything? Um, you know, three years for the for the uh, non-voting members, right? I think it is. You know, you well see, but 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 the board members will be turning over mm -hmm. in that All time. All right, so those so folks could, could possibly move, move in. All and right, we don't okay. want to. Nail them down to three years. <coughs> okay. so every year um, there'll be openings. And you know, they they we may get no associate members. They may say no thanks. Mm. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, There's do you think it would interested. be better to have alternate than associate? I mean, we could go that route. I just. I think that's you know, going to cause no. some problems. I, okay. No, I think right. we talked about this um, as as yeah. since 2017 actually, Linda. <laughs> um, yeah. And I think one other question. Hold on, Sean. I'm all for two. I have two more comments. Um, okay. You know, if, if you, so I know if you approve these uh, by, uh, uh, policies and procedures <laughs> and um, the updated town bylaws as it references Council on Aging pending town meeting, would you think we could appoint some of those associate members pending approval? The new board appointments and then along with those. I think, yeah. Uh, I think well, if not now, we could do it after special after town meetings. Special. Yeah, I think we, we got to wait till it goes through yeah, town no meeting. Yeah, the, I would say Every, that the only hesitation is all we, ha we have a great list of people interested now, but mm -hmm. you know, life changes and. Right, but people I can still go to the meetings if they're not on yeah. the board. Yes. Yeah. So. So if they know that this is a potential change that'll be approved, it would you know maybe behoove them to start mm -hmm. attending. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it's responsible for us to appoint people based on a potential passing of changes. Yeah. Well, the bylaw could fail. Yeah. Right. 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 I've appointed people that aren't legally there. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's too messy. I don't think it will, but it, it is possible the bylaw could fail. Mr. Cherry, two other comments. May I, or do are you, do you have any other? Sean? I think, Sean, you done? I'm, I'm done, thanks. Senior <laughs> Sean, do you, do you have more? Sorry, Sean. Sean will not do your article. Laura? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, one other, you know, you have 27 Brook Street in there many times, so I would suggest you strike oh, that. Oh, okay. Um, and then secondly, I see that under your purpose, the basic purpose of the council, mm -hmm. The last one says to assist in establishing situate as an age-friendly um, mm -hmm. community. Mm -hmm. Can why um, can we say to assist in fostering an age-friendly uh. community? Because I, I don't like the connotation yes. that we aren't currently age-friendly. I know we have a lot of work to do, but right, I, that that just stood out to me. I think fostering. I, I agree. That's a nice word. Let's go. I know I'm being it was picky, just meant to um, explain the involvement and the initiation sure. of the board, but um, but that's great. Plus, do Good you agree? Point. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Any other comments? Good recommendation. Just one more. I I I like the idea of associate uh, members in in all boards because it gives somebody an opportunity to sort of get up to speed mm. before they have to jump into decision making opportunities. So. Um, I think that you're paving the way for others to maybe consider it because I think that mm -hmm. that is a great improvement to mm -hmm. boards. So thank you for that. Good. Great. Okay. Any discussions from the audience? All right. Seeing none. So do we want to wait so and see the changes that come back to us? Do we have a we could vote? do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think okay. so. No. Probably just have them give you a clean copy back and then vote at it next week. Just okay. so all the yeah, copies. Right. They don't have to come back and represent, but no. just give right. you a clean copy and incorporating the changes in the book. So pending the revisions, great. Okay. Um, and then the revisions to the general bylaws that, right. that do need to then go to special town meeting. So we'll put that on. We'll support that. Okay. The language there is okay. We yeah, that's fine. Change it up. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
and then the warrant, which Nancy has, or uh, the article for the warrant, Nancy has. Yeah, just yeah. make yeah. sure the language is proper, and we'll put, we'll support okay. it on the warrant. So we'll submit to you before your next meeting the revisions that you've um, great recommended. The, this will be go again. Just the okay. updated. Mm -hmm. And thank you for doing that. You're welcome okay. to join us again, but thank not necessary. <laughs> All right. Great. That was good. Thanks very much. Thank you guys. Thank you for your work. All right. You're welcome. Yeah. Great night. All right, moving right along, we are going to discuss Go Green Water Connection. Oh, a little stain, if that's all right, Tony. Yep. Hi. Tim, how are you? Good, how are you? Well, good. good. Just to um, kind of summarize where we are, you came before us, I don't even know, two months ago maybe, a month ago, and we, start, we talked about this a little bit. We kind of had a hit list of stuff that we wanted to see done. You and I met a couple times with Kevin and and Jim and Murph, uh, no, no, uh, Officer Thompson, mm -hmm. or Deputy Chief Thompson, and went over some stuff. And um, and now you're back before us asking that we waive the $14,000 water connection fee for your property, which is Go Green, where everyone drops the brush for uh, thousands of people watching um, <laughs> on, the, on the driftway. So that's where we are. My um, personal comments, I've I've been there a couple times in the last couple weeks. I've seen progress going in all the things that we've talked about, the hours, you're starting to widen that thing. That, I mean, the pile's coming down a little bit. It's still still more work to do there, but it's mm -hmm. it's getting wider. I think, Kevin, the street cleaning, I think that at the parking I know has now been resolved. I don't know if we put signs up there yet or not. Parking yep. resolved, signs are up, and the yeah. brushes cut back. Okay. Yep. Um, so I've seen progress, like you said, you were gonna do over over the last month or so. Um, and now that you're not as busy as you used to be, I assume that pile will go down more and you'll widen that area like, like we had We talked about. Yeah. Yep, we're good. We're battling uh, just breakdowns at the moment. Yeah. We hit a giant piece of metal that cost us three weeks grinding time to put the grinder back together and then we had an issue last week that the grinder's down for a little bit longer, so. Yeah. Well, I've seen progress. It's, I was there just Sunday and it's definitely wider. Two thirds of that pile's gone, so yeah. we have another third to go. And the hours, you know, we're paying attention to that more too, which is great. Uh, Kevin, do you have any anything to add in terms of? Uh, just as I said before, my main concern is keeping the driftway clean. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's a gateway to sit to it. A lot of people come in that way, and I think it's important that Tim stays on that and keeps that clean, and there's no dirt or right. anything in front of the entrance dragging in onto the driftway. Right. So we talked about trying to get some uh, used asphalt or whatever you guys call it to get that in there. Mm -hmm. I assume we're still on the lookout for that. Yep. Good. We're just not, we're not ready for that part yet, right. but we're getting there. But right. we've been, you know, since we had that meeting, we haven't had a lot of rain. So for Heritage Days, we were able to sweep, you know, prior, prior to Heritage Days, we were able to sweep the area. Um, obviously, it rained a lot the other day. We've swept it twice since then. So as it, you know, as it becomes an issue, we get out there with the sweeper and we sweep it. We talked about doing, having a detail if we have to get across the street, All right. that it hasn't been that bad since then so i haven't had to do that um but we're trying to be as diligent as we can we trimmed back the bushes by the sign we reestablished our sign out on out, out front that fell during the winter um we're making a significant effort to make things look cleaner good well i've noticed some of it so good work uh jim anything to add no he's got to get the piles down um that's not our requirement that's a state requirement 25 right. feet for the storage of uh, mulch so I know his, his mulch permit is expiring shortly, so he's going to have to be with the fire department to make sure he's going to be able to meet that requirement. Mm -hmm. uh, but he has shown improvement. They started, he's not all the way around the back yet, but they, uh, they did dig out around the back of the fence, which we asked him to. So got a little ways to go, but he is making progress on the checklist that you gave him. Great. Okay, I'll open it up to the board in terms of any of the issues we just talked. We, there was a hit list of, what, six, seven, eight things or whatever yeah. that you... Um, and then we can talk about the, the details of actual what we're here for, the water connection. Any any questions for, for Tim? No, I mean, that was, from my point of view, those were the, the things that needed to get accomplished mm -hmm. and that um, the application itself, we, I think, thoroughly discussed the last time. Um, and uh, we can get to that after we get, I, I mean, yeah. when you're, yeah. If no one has anything. I'm down there all the time. It is looking better. It is looking better. Good. It's noticeable. 
So. Yeah, no, I mean, I think we all said it was a conundrum kind of to be in because it is town property, right? So with regards to the, the fee, yeah. yeah. All right, so now the fee, so it's a, typically there's a, a $14,000 hookup fee. The, the details of it is it is town property. You're leasing it. Um, you do pay your water bill. You have to pay for the usage of the water. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I said last time that it, it makes sense to me that the town should put in the meter there and you pay for whatever you use, just like really any other lease, leasey operation. You know, if we is, wanted to. Is there a meter there now? There is a meter there now, but I don't think it's, it's temporary, temporary meter. Right. So we have right, so we need the, a permanent one. Right. He's yeah. a permanent one. The question is whether or not he would pay the connection fee. Okay. He'll be responsible for putting the connection in. That's. But as a town-owned property, is the town going to require him to pay the connection fee to basically bring that water to your to our property? Right. 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 There's no question that the water department wants him off the temporary and onto a permanent solution down there. Okay. Right. So I believe that we should not charge him for it, but we'll pay him for his water. I mean, he'll pay for his water, yep. and if it would be included in whatever the lease is, you know, if he's, you know, if we if we want to raise the lease or something next time it comes around to make up for it, we probably had that included when it went out to bid the first time in terms of our thought process. So I think uh, I think we should waive it. Um, seems like the right business, you know, the normal business operations functions. I agree 100 percent in reading the lease having you know having gone through the materials before it's we own it and and you're required to pay for the utilities but we're required to provide those utilities except for of course gas and those things so um, or to be fair it's a telephone service isn't going to make you pay for that hookup they're going to put it in so I see it as the same so I agree with you well so I see it as an improvement to the property he can't take it with him and as a result, I would also agree that we should waive it. Okay. I have a motion. Move to waive the $14,000 water connection fee for the town-owned property located at 167 Driftway, rented by Tim Lopesco Green. Second. Second by Ms. Conley. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Are those against? None. So it's 4-0 with one abstention. Thank you. Will Thank that you. will that so, line be put in before winter or? I would it? rather not. Yes. If that's okay. Just I mean, to avoid the. It's up to Kevin, I guess. <laughs> the issues of winter freeze and whatnot. I'd rather do it early in spring if that's okay with everybody here. Well, what is Kevin? So it's our property. The question is how late you need water because with the temporary hookup right. wouldn't be disconnecting that. You know, sometime in the near future as it's not getting colder. Yeah, I think if we disconnected it before. Um, sorry, before, right around November 1st, that would avoid a freeze, I think, which is what we're trying to avoid. Okay. Is that okay? Um, we'll we'll watch the weather. Okay. okay. And if we have to pull it before, then we do. It's getting colder. It's forecast to be freezing. We're going to shut it down. Okay. Perfectly fine with me. Yep. If we can just communicate on it. You know, if we look and we say, hey, we're, it's going to be 20 degrees next week, then I'll have three or four days to get, to get some water, and then I can go up from there. If that's okay with you. You wouldn't want to just get it right in now and get it squared away? No, I, because it may leach away. It may be absorbed by plants that are there where I gather it. It just may not be there for me. Okay. We'll let you guys work on that. Okay. All right. That's it. Thank Great. you. Thank you very much. Okay, the next item Hi. is a discussion on the uh, Lawson Green pilot. Jim? So, uh, Michael, Michael, I always get your last name wrong. Uh, it's here from the project. Um, Lawson Green, as you're aware, is the project behind Central Park by the library. It is a over 55 senior housing, all affordable units. The town has put up Mara, how much is it from the CPC? Over a million dollars? 2.5 million dollars to make this project go, make the numbers work. Uh, as part of that, uh, that we have been asked to enter into a pilot agreement, which is a payment in lieu of taxes agreement. We can do that because it's the housing authority and the way the business is set up. Uh, what the payment in lieu of taxes does is it gives the proponent uh, surety on what his taxes are going to be over 20 years. The starting point that we've used 
is basically what they would pay in taxes if they were taxed. Joe DeVito, our assessor, went and figured out based upon rents and things like that what their taxes would be, and that's the 12,000. The 12, that's 12,300. <laughs> like that, that's in the agreement. Uh, and then it would limit the increases to 2.5% a year for 20 years. The whole property has taxes of $12,000? Yeah. The, the, the new, the new, the new 30 building unit. So based on the rent restriction, since it's 100% affordable, the maximum rents are, are static. So revenue is static over the 20, or over the term of the life of the project. So at no point can we <coughs> rents above 1% per annum. So uh, uh, the adjacent uh, Central Park Apartments project has uh, for 53 units, or what is it? Oh, 50? 51 units, yeah, that's a separate pilot. Uh, amount, I believe that's 19,000 uh, we pay annually for that. Yeah. On so Central? On Central. Is there a percentage as it relates to rent that the tax should be? Not as it Not relates to rent, but it's a formula that Joe uses based upon the rents. It's the same thing you do for a commercial property. The rents, as opposed to the value of the building, it's the value of the lease of the property. And because their rents are restricted, the value of the property is much, much lower than it would be if it was a market rate unit. Mm -hmm. It's just the in income approach to value right. as opposed to reflect, because because it's deed restricted and it can never be taken out of affordability, it has, uh, its market valuation is significantly limited by mm -hmm. that, by that deed restriction. The building's just not worth as much because you can't, no, you can't make much, any money much off lower it. lower than I thought it would be. But using quote fingers, you can't make any money on the building because you can't just go in there and say, well, I, you know, someone wanted to buy the building for them and paid $50 million. I can't go in and raise the rent to get their money back. They capped on what they can charge in the rent. So. What is what, 32 units? It's 30 30. Units. 30. So, I mean, and and what's in central? 51. 51. Yeah, so that's why it's a big difference. Yeah. And again, Joe ran all the numbers, and I trust Joe. He wasn't able to be here tonight, but Joe ran all the numbers on the, as you said, the rental income basis. That's what it came out to because we were going back and forth on the pilot, and, and um, you know, the numbers come out pretty close. The issue with the pilot is he knows, the, the proponent, the owner knows, this is what I'm going to pay, this is what it's going to go up every year, and it, it's locked in so he has a fixed number. Yep. Uh, which to go to the issue is, yeah, yeah, it's it's basically there's a lot of in, uh, the in, you have the tax credit investor, you have the town's CPC investment, and then you have other subordinate lenders in the project. What's happened to some affordable housing projects across the state, and why DHCD is sort of pushing to get these tax agreements in place, is that you might have an assessor that comes in might not understand that that's a rent restricted property, change the assessed value, you have to pay that the tax bill in order to then uh, request a, a, uh, abatement. an abatement on that. Mm -hmm. So when projects have very, very limited income, if suddenly your taxes go from $15,000 a year to $60,000 a year, you have to pay that $60,000 out of the project, and then you're upside down on your debt covenants with your lenders, and you're in technical default. So it's, it's a way of ensuring mm -hmm. that you never end up in that type of a situation. Great. Can you just send us the the math that he did? We're, not, yeah. we're only going to discuss it tonight, right? I don't think we have a vote on it. I mean, it has a discuss and vote. There's one thing we need to discuss tonight that's not on the agenda, which is the soil connection fee, which you'll have to vote next week. And that's my fault, Michael. Sorry. Oh, okay. We can't vote. It doesn't say vote on it for tonight anyways. Uh, no, this says, well, just, just discuss. discuss. You can still vote, even though it doesn't say vote. It's allowed. Okay. Then taxpayers rest on a Blinfield. I can give you the case. I was actually there when it happened. Um, there's an assumption if it's on the agenda and it's being discussed that there will be a vote. That was the Attorney General's ruling. But uh, <laughs> we can send the information. Joe did that. Yeah. This is pretty straightforward. Um, it's a good deal for the town. The town's obviously in favor of this project because we put up so much money uh, to develop it. I believe if all goes well, you can start. Before yeah, that. our objective, there's a couple items that we have to kind of close out, but our objective is to break ground by November 1st so we catch the construction season. Well, what day? Um, November. By November 1st. Uh, you know, it's it, closing one of these transactions is like herding cats or squeezing air in a balloon. And you kind of are pulled in all different directions at any point in time because you have the states involved, so they have their timeline. Um, you know, the town's been very cooperative uh, in terms of 
with working on the CPC side of things to make sure those funds enter the project efficiently. And then it's a matter of working with the Z there are ZBA conditions that I have to fulfill prior to being able to go pull a building permit. You can't close one of these transactions without a building permit, so it's a cart horse thing and trying to talk to the ZBA about, well, you, you know, you, this, this is, can't be a condition precedent here. It has to happen after the fact. We can satisfy that, just, you know. So there's a couple things you have to work through there. Uh, in order to get to that sort of financial closing, which we're working on, um, which we're targeting mid-October. This is a huge piece of that, uh, being able to have the tax agreement in place so I can go check that box, the HCD, and I can say, here we go, look at this. Um, so that that would be great to be able to um, lock this up. And I'm very appreciative for the town's uh, and Jim's uh, work on it to date, and also Joe, the assessor's office. You know, for the record, we're paying what we would pay anyways for taxes. It's just the idea of locking in that surety. Yeah, no problem. And then there's another item that you want to so bring. The second item uh, that we need to discuss tonight, but we have to vote because I, I forgot to put that on. That's my fault. Uh, but we can discuss it. Is the sewer connection fees, which are fourteen thousand plus per unit, which for this project would be over four hundred thousand um, <coughs> dollars. We'll be talking an affordable unit. $400,000 um, does not work mathematically, and Michael can explain that. Uh, they are probably less than a quarter of that than what they have in their financials, so they will be asking the board to give them a break on the connection fees. So what we're trying to do is uh, effectively, we the units have to be separately metered and or under, <laughs> under the, um, well, there's some Section 8 units in the project, so HUD Section 8 units. So those have to be separately metered. And the policy of DHCD is to have tenants paying specific metered prices. In the pro uh, property next door where you have one single meter under the existing uh, water, uh, water charge uh, schedule, you're basically tax you're treated as one large sort of industrial user. In our project, the way it's been designed is to have separate meters. So we're going to have 31 meters, one common meter, and then 30 individual meters. And so we're hoping to be able to receive some relief on that because it's not truly, you know, we, but for the fact that we have to regulatorily treat this this way, we could easily just pick up the water as one meter throughout the entire facility. Water or sewer? Wait, water, water or sewer. sewer? Yeah, water or sewer. Wait, this 10 minutes. Is this, yeah. <laughs> we talked about sewer, is this water and sewer? No, I'm sorry, this is sewer, sewer connection, yeah, sorry, this is sewer. Okay. Water's not an issue, I'm, I'm just sort of... How I, are you doing water? Um, water will be connected, I mean... One meter water. or 30 meters? Um, I, I'm inclined to mo have 30 meters as well, so... You should. 31, right, right. And sewer what's water. the water hookup? Do you need an abatement on that as well? Um, I'm not sure that's as uh, serious a uh, thing. Right now it's not as... Draconian as the sewer hookup. It doesn't? Not yet. <laughs> it's fifteen hundred dollars a meter. Yeah. So it's a lot of resource committees here, they can probably address that better, but it's a master meter is the cost of the one meter right now. It's more it's a more expensive meter, but it's not as expensive as some meeting every apartment. Well, if he does a meter on every one right now it'd be fourteen thousand times thirty. Right. Of course he wouldn't. Um, we're going to talk about that later. Jane, and sewer very water. 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 I was talking water. water. Oh, okay. Yeah, but you said fourteen thousand, which is sewer, it is. So fourteen thousand. Fourteen thousand for is water. This, water is this, too. Oh, it's fourteen thousand. No, I thought that was. That's the sewer. Sewer oh, so happens to be the same. Sewer the same. It's eighteen, and then it's fourteen for. They're both the same. I have it right here. Sorry. Oh, it's sixteen and fourteen, isn't it? Like a year and a half yeah. ago. Well, maybe their project was in before we raised the rates. Well, that's the question. Was it permitted? So it was it's already by the permitted. Yeah, already. So we have to so check. The, the sewer privilege fee is fourteen thousand a unit. Uh, I'm not sure if the water. Per unit. Mm. Yeah. Right. Under the existing, um, yeah, for residential sewer permits. The water is that too, but you may have gotten it in, as Sean just said, when it was 6,500. Your project may have started prior to us raising the rates. Okay. Well, it's I a question of when it's. So you're going to probably want to 
If it's 6,500, then it, in, in the project would be uh, subject to the the water. If it was a master meter, same water consumption requirements, then we'd probably and we sub meter that. Does that still require? Is it 65 for the master? We're talking meter? about it in 15 minutes. Oh, okay, but you'll pay more per cubic foot. And that's the problem no, I mean, we have the, with Central Park yeah. is that when the usage is calculated with 51 units, it's a big number. The higher rate. And we're billed as if it's oh, one rate. household using a massive amount of water. So our bill is significantly more than it should be if it was factoring in that there's 51 separate units there. But that's only because the builder put in one meter and that's paid we just have the one, the one meter times that in there. Okay, so I guess my point there is we're going to want to discuss both next week, Jim. Yep. Because you'll probably need it. You'll probably running, need, a bow, a bow. need better numbers. The DPW is running numbers on other projects and what we charge for for soil connection fees, which you would ask me to tell me. So we'll have all that for you. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, Jim, in our conversation, said it's it would cost about four hundred thousand dollars. That's and just the sewer privilege right. fee. So, that's what so we'll talk about sewer first, and you're looking to pay about a quarter of that. Is that that's correct? Okay. You know now, but now, however, the, now we're taking the water connection fee being significantly, the, the water privilege fee being significantly higher than previously estimated. We we'd want to be able to between the two fees be in under a quarter. It's basically the max I can go up to is a hundred thousand dollars because that's all I've got for built. both or for each. For both, that's what we have in the budget. I mean, it's basically. You know, otherwise I have to go out and ask for more money from the state or borrow more. And the project doesn't have a great deal of capacity just for permits, essentially. Okay. That's where we are. All right. Well, let's see how the next conversation goes, and then we'll we'll have better yeah, communication we'll to talk about to next week. Then. Yeah. You know, unfortunately, both of those funds are in need of money. Um, well, for but, you know, you know, we're a good neighbor. We've scoped the entire, you know, when yeah. we were, yeah. per, no, no, we were looking at the, uh, we scoped the entire. I believe it's First Parish, or is it um, Branch Street? Branch Street. We we did about a mile and a half linear uh, investigation for the sewer department uh, for of, of the sewer, just when we were there doing our investigation of like right. being able to. So we're trying. Well, to be, I can tell you that the whole board supports the project, so right, we'll no, we'll figure something out. Um, any questions? Uh, I guess we'll have to I would suggest that we vote the whole thing next week with the the pilot program as well as the water and the sewer well uh, just but mr. chair um, can we ask just do you need the pilot done tonight so you can go to your next step Mike well so that the pilot is a condition precedent for signing the ground lease with the housing authority so we don't sign the are uh, the project is a limited partnership a tax credit limited partnership that has to sign a ground lease then we have site control with the housing authority we can't sign the ground lease until the pilots in place um, so it's a necessary first step whether a week delay is significant and slowing it'll down be two weeks two, two weeks. weeks I'm sorry yes no that would be very important to wrap that up right now so let's do the pilot <laughs> well I haven't seen the information on it so I it's right here actual lease well, do you want that no he's looking for I'm, the I'm looking for the tax you want the finances yeah So you're you're telling us if you don't get the pilot approved tonight, well, no, it would, that it would, would be. Cert, it's not. It would not be a death knell to not get it approved tonight, yeah. but it would significant. It would show progress because Stephen has to take it back to town council for review. <coughs> we have to review on our side for the ground lease, and then our investor has to review. Our lender has to review. So even with the water and the sewer not all, all that yet? hanging out there, because that's not even <coughs> contained in the because there's. There's about 500 different discrete items on the closing checklist that have to be, you know, methodically knocked off, and these are some of the big kind of big ticket items that are outside of our control. Necessarily, a lot of the issues are things like doing geotech borings, environmental review. All these things are things that are within the pro develop project developer's control, but this is one of those that's outside that uh, sphere. Um, I'll open up to you guys to. Chat, any comments or well if he can wait two weeks you'll get all three done and, yeah, I right I mean is that it's or that, that's not not horrible I mean we're once targeting end of September for closing but you know 
Spring to November. <laughs> <laughs> it takes a lot longer mm. to get, get there. But yeah, I mean, if that's the preference of the board, I'm happy to defer to that. That's so explain to me, if you get the pilot tonight and you don't get the water and sewer, can you still go forward? Well, he can go to the next step with the housing authority and sign the ground lease with the housing authority. Yeah, it's just a matter of being able to sign the ground lease. With Is the that significant or it could, you're going to tell us? Do you have any vacation coming up? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's not, it's not, it's, it would be a substantial step. It is not detrimental. I mean, given our time, our closing timeline now, but the water and sewer and pilot, they're very important components of it. If you're there, if there's a way to move the pilot <coughs> over tonight, that'd be wonderful. If it was to be voted on and accepted, that'd be great. Um, it's one thing I can show the investor uh, and the lender that we've made progress on, on our weekly closing calls. So okay. how does the board feel about that? I, I'm, very confident that the work was done right. I've just never seen this before, and I wanted to look at it. Jim, yeah, Joe, at Joe does a real good job. I don't have any question that Joe's done the numbers right. He's run them a bunch of times, and he's you know one of the best around at this sort of stuff. So <coughs> I'm, I have full confidence that Joe's run the numbers correctly. So there's the. Go ahead. I don't have a problem doing the pilot program, but I don't either. I'm going to have questions on the water and sewer, but that's yeah a topic for. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I feel confident the assessors got the numbers right. Um, I think we should move this forward if we can. I, tonight. I agree with the pilot voting on that tonight. Okay. And you're sure we can do it even though it doesn't say vote? Yes. <laughs> it's on Jim. Trust me, I've only sued him that once. I'm pretty sure you can do it. Now you're only pretty sure. Before you told uh -oh. me, uh, <laughs> the percentages are going down. Take a look at. All right. Well, if you guys want to vote, wh what is the uh, number? Twelve thousand three hundred. Is that what it was? Mm -hmm. And limit the. Uh, you can say it's written probably two and a half percent annually during the term of the lease. Mm -hmm. Is that the motion? There is no motion, so I can make one up. Want me motion to would be to approve the pilot. You want to make a motion? Agreement as presented. Well, four of you want to move forward, so I would lose. <laughs> All right. I move that <laughs> the board is. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I move that the board of selectmen agree the payment in lieu of taxes, otherwise known as the pilot agreement for the Lawson Green project um, as written, making initial payment in the amount of $12,300 and this payment shall increase 2.5% annually during the term of the lease between the Citroen Housing Authority and Lawson Green in accordance to the schedule. Second. <laughs> Second. I wish, is that? Did that motion cover everything that we needed, Jim? Yep. Okay, second by Ms. Conley. Further discussion? Any from the audience? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous, 5 to 0. So the pilot has been passed. You can go forward with that, and then next week we'll talk about the water and the sewer. Okay, great. Yeah. We need to check your water numbers and we'll talk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. I got a clean one. I'll do it. No, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. Nothing signed. I'll do it at the end of the meeting. So, Steve, you'll find out the discussion we're going to have in a couple minutes on water pumps. <coughs> That'll be pertinent to what you guys are dealing with as well. Perfect. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, Michael, you're going to you're going to come in next. Absolutely. So, do you want to put him? Is it be earlier, better, or later for you? Whatever is convenient for the board. Um, I gave you a chance. <laughs> Go for the first slot. I don't mind later, it's fine. It's, uh, oh, whenever you, whenever no, you no. Sorry, you want to go early, Mike. You want to go early. <laughs> go early or go home. <laughs> Old business. <laughs> other, other, other business. <laughs> okay. Um, Wednesday morning business. Yeah. Right. So the next item that we're going to discuss. Um, is a discussion vote for a Charter Review Commission. So we've been talking about this, Sean, for probably 
10 years and more recently more um, so I asked Jim to put it on the agenda for us tonight to discuss um, whether we wanted to set up a commission to appoint people for a charter review um, have people apply go through the normal policies that we do for every other commission um, and have them look at the charter and come up with um, proposals to us it's a complicated process Jim will tell us when it gets back or maybe Lorraine knows it has to come before the board get approved get approved at the State House and then get pr approved at a vote at town meeting to make a change in the Charter that's how you do it okay there's, there's different ways to do a charter change uh, what we're looking at and I think what the petition article that you have before you tonight is to do a charter change by a special act so the board would appoint a charter committee not commission we can't call it a commission a charter committee to make recommendations to town meeting to file a special act of the legislature to make changes to the charter that is different than a charter commission which is elected that's a much longer process a much more formal process yeah, there is nothing in front of you tonight because I have nothing if you have a charter committee you can't touch touch elected officials so you can't change the term of the board of selectmen you can't make the planning board appointed under a charter committee you have to have a charter commission to do that so this would just be a committee that what the board had talked about is to look at the charter it's been 16 years since we looked at the charter to see what changes tweaks would need to be made they would recommend them to you you would send them to town meeting as special acts of the legislature to go to the legislature to be voted on by the legislature those do not have to go back to the voters they can they're not required to okay if it's a committee uh makeup okay it's a committee uh, okay a commission well, could take point, up to two years yeah, the point of the matter is we want we want we want a group of people to look at the charter and kind of get it updated it's been 16 years um and there's things in there that I think we all think could be tweaked a little bit so this would just start the ball rolling and go from there um, any comments Karen uh, clarification so if I heard what you said correctly if you want to make substantive changes you have to go through a commission if you want to make changes that involve elected officials their terms and things like that you need to go through a commission Okay. So if you wanted to go from a Board of Selectmen, Town Administrator, Town Meeting to a Town Council, Town Manager, that would require a commission. Okay. Yeah. That's it. That would require That's a, a commission. Okay. If you just want to change the fact that, oh, uh, um, we're not a select board. Yeah, change it from select man to select board. That doesn't require a commission. That can be done through a uh, special act. Can you walk us through the if you go to the commission? What's the what's that look like from a process standpoint? Uh, I've never done one of those. Most people don't recommend it. Um, it's a petition to do it. it. Has to be passed by town meeting. Then it has to go to the ballot. The people get elected to the charter commission. Um, then they take it back to town meeting, and eventually whatever the final project is, product is has to go to the voters for a vote. Uh, it's a very involved process it's very unwieldy and I can't think of any town that's used it in forever so when I was in Noel we used the committee the committee made substantive changes to the town administrator's position how that worked um, in terms of setting up authority and things like that but didn't touch any of the elected officials and then that went as a special act of the legislature Karen? Well, my understanding is to do a commission, you need to get, what is it, 10% of registered voters? Yep. In there's, this there's town, a, that's 14,000. There's a petition drive that has to be done. That's why it's a very, very long process. And if you have the wrong comma, Well, I think count. the town of Amherst actually did a charter review commission about five years ago or so. Because they did away with town meeting. Yes, yes. And it was very divisive I will say very divisive if you read the stories about it and uh, it took about a year and a half two years multiple meetings and literally it was it was very divisive so um, but know. I think I don't, I don't think it was because they had a commission I think it's because what they did no it was what they recommended yeah, they went from, a, they went from a, an open town meeting to a town manager town council so no more town meeting right so well, it have to be a commission that have to be a commission that's yeah. right 
but I don't think the board is contemplating anywhere near doing away with town meeting or changing. I think you just want to look at, in my conversations with various board members, you just want to look at the charter and kind of fine tune it a little bit and make some changes, fix some things that are kind of at odds. But well, if we formed a committee, could there also be, uh, citizens could decide they want a commission, correct? That's where that would emanate from. Yeah. That's what I was thinking as well. Yeah, but that maybe that's then you have things step. that cross purpose. You have two separate things. Yeah, going that's on. why I'm asking the question. Well, I, I would suggest that if the committee came back with major changes, then the board would deal with it then and. And maybe then a the commission. Yeah. I mean, we've got to just yeah. start the ball rolling. Right. That's my thought process right. too. Got more? Yeah, that's my thought process as well. Just listening to the differences is that. You know, there are a lot of folks out there that definitely do want to take a look at town meeting, you know, and, and its effectiveness. And if that's ultimately where we end up, maybe it is first through this initial committee process right. to see, is that really, you know, in the best interest of all the residents and people being engaged? Or are there other things that can be done without that much of a major shift to improve participation? Because that's really always the issue, right? People want to change town meeting because they don't think that enough people participate and that their voices aren't really heard. Um, I think I know that's a very broad okay. statement, but but um, it's one of the challenges. So, I mean, I'm okay with a committee because maybe then they come back and maybe there is a consensus out there that something larger needs to be done. But this committee would be able to determine that. So, just to, to go from to change the quorum for town meeting committee to do away with town meeting commission. Yeah. No. Exactly. Understood. Yeah. Sean, did you have anything? No, no, I don't give anything. Not right this second. Um, the last charter review in 2003 was that was a committee. Do we do we yes. know this? Um, and what and Marshfields was a committee. And they uh, were trying to add a board board members. I'm not sure what Marshfields was. Noel was a committee appointed by the board of selectmen. Um, Marshfields might have been a commission because Marshfields was going to do away with the elected board of public works. Right. So that might have been a commission. Yeah, I would think it was changing elected officials. Because Marshfield has a completely separate elected DPW. Yeah. That right. Doesn't report yeah. to the, the selectmen of the town administrator. That's weird. Um, last question, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Um, could in setting up a committee, we could man could we mandate that there be you know, two public um, input sessions. It's our committee. You can mandate whatever you want. Okay. You need, if it's not a public, but needs it, if it's not a public charge, process, yeah. it's not going to work. Pardon me. It's not a public process. It's exactly. Not work. That's what I mean. We have to craft it very carefully that it's a very public process. I mean, this is the most we can do at this point: mm -hmm. is put a committee together and have them start the process. Yeah. Um, I'm, Okay, so why don't we come up with a charge for the next meeting and a membership, probably somewhere between 7 and 11 members, and we'll put it before you for the next meeting. What did we do with that one? How many members? Can we call Jim without her? I can look. I don't know. I don't actually okay. list it. I thought it was. Uh, so we changed the forum. Is that when we changed the districts? Does anyone remember that? No. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What do you want to gerrymander over there, Sean? <laughs> well, it used to be the selectmen were from districts, not that's from correct. at large. Right. I think that's, yeah. that was well before that, no. That was a long time ago. Yeah. Right. So that just was a uh, town meeting. And that could be so done by a committee, right, Jim? Yeah, oh, so that was town meeting, Sean? To change the quorum? No, no, no. no, 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 no. no. We used to have districts. Representative districts. Board, commission. board members. No, no, no. We still we have five members. members. Because districts are elected. So you're, you're changing... Someone's elected position that requires. And we did something illegal. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just going from my knowledge. Not us. So, the rule could have changed. No, but I just. The rule could have changed. All right, so, yeah, let's hold erase it. that. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so it was this. Well, 2003 document. says it was a Situate Charter Commission, and a report to the voters of Situate. That's what I. I think it was. I think it was too. So. I think it was a big deal election. Yeah. All right, well. Yeah, the Citroen Charter Commission was elected by the voters of Citroen in March 2002, so that was a commission, not a committee. Much bigger deal. Okay, so what we're proposing is let's get the ball started with a committee, and um, we can draft up a, a charter and um, a charge, I mean, 
and see where it goes from there. And that that committee can propose anything. They're not if they wanted to oppose getting rid of the town meeting, they can. We just would have to go yeah. another step to enact it. You have to change it. You have to change to a different process to do that. That's right. Well, as a commission, I just <coughs> yeah. okay. Good. So, can can should we make a motion to to um, agree to form a charter review committee? Um, why don't you just take a vote to direct me to come up with a yeah. charge and a composition for a charter review committee for the next meeting? Okay. okay. So done. Great. All right. When's our next meeting? Well, we make that motion. <laughs> September 7th. Uh, do we need a motion or is yeah. it just yeah. a. No, I'm good. No, no, we I'm just good. told him to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Good job. <laughs> All right. Great. Um, we are now going to move on to the Water Resource Commission proposal for water connection multi unit buildings. Becky? Oh, yeah. Um, have a seat. Um, just a, a quick comment to save maybe some of you time. Um, I mentioned this at the beginning of the meeting. If you're from Cedar Point right now, um, the item at 905. The uh, reconsideration of our vote for a, a gravity or a low pressure main has been removed. There's not going to be a reconsideration. It is going to be, as it was voted before, a gravity system and not a low pressure system. You're more than welcome to stay for the meeting, um, but if you want to leave, you can. Yes. Hi. Just your name. Item number 910. 905 and 915. That's not going to be active on either. There's been no. Uh, decided not to there will be no re reconsideration vote thank you yep um we will vote the project though so we, there will be a vote to terminate the contract or did we already do that you need to vote for that no you don't have to do it contract. just let it go okay yeah. great so there'll be nothing, nothing. <laughs> probably there'll probably be a charge to do to get a proposal for a gravity system right away We'll just, I've already spoken to Kevin and we'll get an RFP ready to go to get the engineer on board and get started. Yeah. You already voted that at the last meeting. Okay. Yeah. Great. So if anyone's here from there and they want to, if they're waiting for that, that's not going to happen. Um, <laughs> Becky, how are you? I'm good. Before you? you get started, I want to comment on something that's, that's relevant to the water resource. At the beginning of the meeting, you saw Jim shake that bottle that has the brown water in it and it is settled in a couple hours so I don't know is that, is that you know it just shows what happens it gets stirred up and then over time it settles and now it's all at the bottom of our water system again and not going through people's pipes so yeah brown water complaints go way way down in the winter time and then after July 4th they come right back as people turn on their Turn their homes and turn their water and start water on their lawns and, and the water starts barreling through the pipes. Great. Okay, Becky. Um, so, after our last presentation, do I, should I review the whole thing? I'll do it for you so you don't have to. That would be great. So, we've, we've all read all of the material. Okay. You came before us and you wanted to um, change or discuss changing the water hookup fees for multi-unit units that come in and put one unit in or one meter in and hook it up to 20 units mm -hmm. and it causes people to save on the hookup fee of the meters but not the use on the water because the water goes up and we're, they're paying a higher rate on the usage of the water right. and we're trying to get people to conserve water so we'd like to have more people have more control of their water usage right. so you've met with your committee I know Karen has been heavily involved going back and forth with you as well and this is your proposal which we've read and We'd like you to summarize. Okay, sure. Um, so um, I met with both Brad Washburn and Nancy Holt after our last meetings, um, and um, the decision or the the new idea was um, to char continue to charge a fourteen thousand dollar initial connection fee, but for these multi-unit developments to then charge the cost of the meter for each additional unit. So that's why this is like kind of a two-pronged proposal. So right now, the cost of a new meter, or the charge for a new meter is $250, um, which doesn't really reflect the fact that the cost of the meters has increased. So the water department um, has suggested $500, increasing that to $500 to more accurately represent 
the cost of the meter as well as the labor to install the meters. So the first part of the proposal is to increase the cost of a new meter to $500 for a 5 eighths inch meter. Um, and that there would be a regular review of these costs to allow for increases over time. Um, and then the second proposal would be to update the water connection fees policy as is listed here. So basically no longer allowing master meters and the cost for these single meters it, for one meter, single meter in each unit of a multi-unit building would be the $14,000 connection fee plus $500 for each additional unit. And um, so that this language has been approved by Town Council, by Nancy Holt, by Brad Washburn, and Kevin Cafferty, as well as, as well as the Water Resources Commission. Great. Questions? Well, Seeing I have none? to say it's a much cleaner proposal than the one we were discussing the meeting before last. Right. It's, I, I think it's easier to understand. It's clear. And I think the whole point of it is to help people conserve water. And people who aren't using as much water in multi-use buildings shouldn't have to pay, you know, what's essentially a blended rate. So if they're, if they're small users, you know, they won't be paying more um, than someone else would be. So I think it's, I think it's good. More? I just have a question. Is there any sort of, um, I didn't see anything like a constraint on, so the size of the project. So for instance, you take a 250 unit project and they're paying 14,000, yet a 50, I mean a 10 unit project is paying 14,000. Um, plus 500 per. So then right, plus the 500 per thing. I understand right. that, but I mean, to me, those are two completely different size projects. I don't know. That was, that would be my only sort of question on how we would, address an issue like that so but I'm 100% I'm into individual metering you know for water conservation purposes as well we did clear. look initially maybe two presentations ago <laughs> at um and I wasn't at that meeting so right, right. so no, I apologize no, no, no for not I don't even know that this came to you guys it. I think we looked at it kind of as a result of some comments we looked that was the, where we really started the re big review was looking at what do we do set it at one to five units six to ten like kind of and the 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 break would be pretty subjective um so we kind of decided to take this more all-encompassing approach that it would we wouldn't account for different size developments that they would all hopefully get would be considered an equitable equitable rate both in terms of um, the planning community as well as the water community so may i ask kevin a question yeah i mean kevin is there any I'm, you know, I'm not an engineer guy. Is there any big difference in the cost of installing a water connection for a large, a large development compared to a, you know, 10 or 20 unit? I'm just curious. Um, I, I think I understand your question. The, the, it's the cost of the meter. A six inch meter is a lot more expensive than a five eighths meter. If if that's what you're asking, and it does require more labor to install it. Um, is Was that kind of the gist of what you were asking, or? But this wouldn't change that. But this, there wouldn't be a difference in size though, right? Because there wouldn't be six inch meters. Sure there would be, if it's a big development. If they, if they have to have that, they get that, right? For the same but fee, that's, I think that's. I'm reading this, so my understanding, I mean, at least my interpretation of it, is that big building would need an individual meter for each unit, and right. then that each unit would be charged. Right. Five hundred dollars. Yeah, but they'd be charged. Th yeah, they'd be charged. The five hundred plus the fourteen thousand. Fourteen thousand once. Right. Well, fourteen thousand once. Ten times, or twenty times, or a hundred times. Right. That's right. how I understand it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that two hundred unit so subdivision goes up. A building or multiple buildings, 20 right. units, they pay 14,000 and then 500 times 200. Right. 14,000 is just once. But whereas with the the larger, I mean, a six inch meter you don't see typically. I mean, that's oh, really rare that you can I, see that. I had to put one in. My building wasn't that, not situate, but. How many units? One building. One building. So it's my understanding that in town we don't typically we don't use a lot of six inch meters, um, and that in that case let's say, so for example on the we've got this sample seventy eight unit project, so let's say it would have a couple of different buildings, and in this case maybe each building would get a four inch meter, so four inch meter is six hundred forty five dollars, um, so that's under with the master meters as we currently do it. Under this proposal, 
that that would be replaced with just a bunch of five eighths inch meters. Um, so it would be the, the the cost of the meter times however many units I said seventy eight there. So I think the infrastructure would be different. But yeah. So are we really I'm covering our costs then if the infrastructure is different? Yeah. So we've run the numbers to look at kind of what what these sample projects look like under the current uh, master meter um, policy and what it would look like under the proposal that we have here. Um, and the proposal we have here still brings in a little bit more money than the, the, with the current policy, so we wouldn't be losing any funding. And there's a benefit to the way that the money comes in versus um, having all kind of upfront costs as you would have now with the master meters. With the single meters, there's some longer term co costs that will help support the water department as well. Do you have that math? Yeah, so that's a spreadsheet that was submitted. It has a blue section, a gray section, and a, an orange section. Uh, that might be a different one. Email it to you. Oh, was it separate? Uh, it was scanned in as one package. Oh, okay, let me see. And I'm sorry, it's a blue and an orange, not a blue and an orange and a gray. Oh, thank you. Do we have it? No. I don't see it. Oh, yeah. And I don't know, maybe if Nancy, maybe, maybe Nancy wants to provide some know. perspective. What, what's that show, Becky, that Tony's looking at? The difference between the current policy and the... And the proposal. So the proposal, let's say, it's not as is. And again, this is all kind of making a whole bunch of assumptions, but looking at these sample, handful of sample projects, under the proposal, you, it would bring in $521,558 over the course of the year, whereas under the current policy, the master meters would bring in about $435,963. $435,963. Um, so can I just yep. point of clarification okay sure. so we have the development on the on Old Country Way that has three separate buildings mm -hmm. it's one development right so under this they would it the, uh, the way this is written if I'm reading it right then that that would have one fourteen thousand dollar connection even though it's three separate buildings right so that's the other the other thing to look at that we did look at was you know with the master meters in that development there'd be one of two choices if you have one master meter for all three buildings or you have three master meters one for each building so the numbers can kind of skew one way or the other depending on how the projects would go if you were to maintain then it would be fourteen thousand dollar connection per building under the current right policy. Um, but under the proposal, it would be $14,000 and then $500 for each unit in all three of those buildings. Sean? Sure. I'm still thinking. So, so if I'm a developer doing that same project, <coughs> I don't have a choice or I do have You don't a have a choice anymore. So I'm, okay. So right. one $14,000 meter. So to look at... Then of the 30 unit, just to give you a sense of what the developer pays for the hookup fee. Under the proposal, right. the developer is going to pay $29,000. Under the current policy, if they were to have, and that's if they were to have one master meter per building, they would actually be paying $56,000. So it actually, in some cases, it will behoove the developer to, the new policy behooves the, the developer. My problem with this is, um, I think in the long run we lose money because you're looking at a one-year snapshot. But every year, where we would get. So let me actually address that. So if you look at, um, I don't know if you can see column letters. No. Um, so the last blue. Do you see colors? Do you have blue and orange? <laughs> so the last blue column and the last orange column mm -hmm. show quarterly usage fees mm -hmm. under both proposals and you'll see that the quarterly usage fees are much <coughs> higher under the current under the proposal than they are under the current policy and it's that quarterly usage fee that will sustain the water department in the longer run versus the higher upfront hookup fee it's so if we look at the look at the 40 mm -hmm. 40 units 40 units, yep. So you're saying it's going to be $11,000 in quarterly meter fee yes. compared to 4500 Exactly. 
How can it be 4500 4, for every project? Because that is part of the way it works for master meters, the way the... Whether there's two units or 40 units? I can kind of let Nancy speak a little bit more to that, but the, I believe that's how the, the charge, there's a kind of a set charge for the quarterly units for a quarterly usage fee for master meters and the charge for the single meters is different. For water usage? Yes. I don't, I don't think that's right. Cubic foot is a cubic foot. Well, it's the it? same whether there's two units or 250 units. I can't believe, oh, the annual? The annual charge, yeah, there's something wrong with the math. They get charged on usage. Yeah, see, it says, I think something's wrong with the math because it oh. says 179 for annual and quarterly is 4,500. So that, I think, there's a Because here, the problem. quarterly charge under, this, under the proposal, the quarterly charge is then charged for each meter. So you have many more meters under the proposal versus under the master meter, the quarterly charge only applies to one meter. So the quarterly charge for sing quarterly usage fee for single meters is seventy-four dollars per quarter. Oh, that's just for the meter, the last column. I I, I will say I don't know exactly what that yeah, it, charge is. It's, it's just a base charge. Just a base charge. So it's forty-five hundred dollars whether you have two units or two hundred and fifty units. It depends on if you have a master meter or whether you have single. This is the current. Meter. So for the current master policy, so master meter. So five eighths is right now about seventy-four dollars. Is $74, $74 for what? Per unit? For quarter, for base and charge. here we have for the base charge, in here it's $1,131 for the master meter. So that must be for the six inch. Is that the six inch? Do you know what that number is? $1,131 is the six inch. Yeah. Well, if we just look at the annual charge for water, so the second to last column, I don't, yes. something doesn't look right in the last column. So under the current program, we would make $284,000. Mm -hmm. And under the new program, we'd make hundred and forty-eight thousand dollars. Right, because about you half. Charge a higher rate for the master meters. Um, this is just water usage. Just because yeah. everybody. No, so if you have a, a master rate, rate, yeah, there's a higher rate for water. So that's usage what leads me to believe rate. that, in the long run, we're going to lose money. And twenty years of of getting hundred and fifty thousand dollars less of revenue coming in is going to way outweigh the $14,000 for the hookup fee. I mean, I, I think what, what happens here is the, de sorry, the developer chooses not to pay the money up front and chooses to pass the cost along to the tenant because mm. they put the single meter in, they pay 14 grand, and all of a sudden the users have to pay for it and they're paying the escalated, you know, the exponentially high rate. If we went in and we said, okay, developer has to pay, you gotta pay fourteen thousand dollars for every hookup, not five hundred for the additional ones. Now all of a sudden we're taking that cost and we're putting it they're paying up front and it's being paid by the developer, not the tenant. Right. Um, so I was a little surprised that it was only five hundred dollars for each additional meter maybe 14 was too high but i thought 500 when i first read it was very low because now all of a sudden the developer somebody said you put in 200 units you get 200 um meters for a hundred thousand dollars instead of 1.4 million or mm -hmm. you know some outrageous you know some much higher number well, I think the thinking of choosing the five hundred dollars it was initially was two fifty, but was to represent the cost of the meter, and then that that was an equitable additional cost, um, and that would be something that when it came to forty Bs or low income housing, that would be defensible to the housing board, that basically just charging you the cost of the meter as opposed to yeah. But what about all the non forty Bs? No, I agree. I, 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 yeah, I don't. I don't know. So yeah, um, I, I'd I, love maybe some feedback. In yeah, terms no, of I mean that's, that's what we're doing here. Yeah, so, yeah. No, um, so I'd like to understand these to numbers it. a little bit more. But I, I think that it's got to be a more. You know, we need money in the water department. We need to, to make more money to make more water. I couldn't right? agree more. So I think this proposal is going to make us lose more money, as opposed to get the developers to pay more money to have the value of hooking into our water system. So I like the individual meter aspect. I just think we've got to charge them more to, um, to get a meter. 
I yeah. think this was what would be helpful for us kind of moving forward. So, you know, Nancy Holt and I worked very closely on this. Um, we worked pretty closely with Brad Washburn as well as with town council. So, um, it would be nice to have a set of feedback that, okay, what's too much money in your eyes? What's just the right amount of money as opposed <laughs> to kind of us figuring out the Goldilocks on the back end? and then coming back because this was numbers that Nancy and I came up with that would be longer term and sustainable um, and that would provide the money that the water department needs and then also provide this kind of equitable fee or equitable equitable additional charge so I don't know what's kind of um, what, what would be acceptable is a higher increase and then can we kind of defend that increase when it comes to lower income housing and you know well lower income housing they come before us like they just did and we work out some deal for some abatement but this is helping everybody that's just putting five condos in um, develop it at a much lower cost I mean right. they, they should be they should be paying fourteen thousand dollars per meter I um, agree yeah and then then all of a sudden the enterprise funds has money to do stuff um, right but when we did this present is just that, my yeah opinion. no I agree but when we and that was our no. initial no. take um, and the concern was that that would put a um, that that wouldn't really be acceptable to the planning and development community, and in terms of there being any growth in situate. So I think just that maybe it would help if we had maybe some more. Maybe it was it's a, it's a meeting separate from this. Maybe you, some of you, are part of the conversations. Yeah. We well, that's what this yeah. is. I mean, that's just my opinion. Yeah. Laura may think we should give it to them for free. So I don't. <laughs> not that you would. I mean, but it's just whatever the opinions are. So I don't know, what do you guys think in terms of, I really have to understand the money aspect of it to make sure that it's not a win in year one, but over 20 years, the cash flow works to the detriment of the enterprise fund. And I think that was, you know, that was a comment that Nancy had made in that the single meters do provide that highly quarterly usage fee that is constant that will constantly come in as opposed to just having a higher upcharge for the meter so well it's nice to have the money in the bank initially that by having the the quarterly usage fee like I said allows for kind of longer term growth um, so but to wrap up my thoughts I I think there should be individual meters mm -hmm. I think that should be charged a lot more for the meters and I think um, you know we need the funds in the in the enterprise fund to do what we need to do for the water in this town so so and I believe your comment at the last meeting was that you wanted to hear from Sean and Nancy that these numbers made sense and would provide enough funding for infrastructure um, and movement, future improvements. So um, this kind of comes at their recommendation. So I guess I'd just be curious what would be the right and a number or what would be the right support for the number that would make you feel comfortable um well i haven't seen this before tonight so i gotta uh, i gotta look at this and i can get together with nancy and and talk about it yeah i mentioned two things um one Did you see that? you talked about it looking at a one-year snapshot you're right as to the terms of a spreadsheet but as to the longer range where you would be looking at base charges and store use um, water uses charges Rate increases. So, with a mm -hmm. higher upfront cost, right. here's your static upfront cost. Whereas, where you, if you structure it in such a way that you have more funds coming in, a lower upfront cost, but more funds mm -hmm. coming in on the annual cost, and then think about what, you, what your increases are over a 10 or 20 year period, you're going to capture some of what you might lose from that original upfront cost, but have it for your operating expenses. Sorry, a lot of hands talking. Oh, but the need they have to do that. I don't, I don't understand that logic because if you, if you did it the other way, you'd get more money when the fees went up because you'd be getting more of it on the tail end of the water usage. So you're going to have that exponential rate. That rate's going to go up. And instead of getting, you know, two hundred eighty-four thousand dollars a year, that's going to go up because the rates went up. Right, but you're getting more single meters because part of this discussion. Right. Difference um, to Stephen's point earlier because you're not getting that 
higher rate because it's a lump sum on the base, you are seeing a higher amount. But we can be offline and discuss it. The other um, point when Becky and I were talking, was the question that came up to me initially about this, which was a lot of these larger units that are coming forward, not all of them, but a lot of them are 40Bs, and they could, any type of policy that was adopted could get challenged by the DHCD and will lose if it's considered economically um, not feasible for them to move forward the $14,000. So, as like you said, it doesn't apply to everything, but it would apply well. to 40Bs. My only comment to that is when the 40B goes in on um, the drift, excuse me, on 3A, we're going to be very close to 10%, so we won't have a lot of 40B problems in the near future. And I After that goes in. So I think True. to think that it's going to be a long, long term project problem with 40Bs, I don't think that's going to be the case because we're going to put in 250 units in a while that should get us very close to the limit. But, but there will be a few other. And the town will continue to build low-income housing after you hit your right. 40B limit, right? So, or your mat, or I guess <coughs> yeah. So it, it was very know. much a part I've of the conversation the first time we discussed this. So we tried to meet those comments. Could you mm -hmm. provide this bigger with different <laughs> scenarios? Yeah, so Lorraine has the spreadsheet okay. that has all those scenarios. You're more than welcome to... Take a look. I would be happy to meet with any of you and review it and review the numbers or sit with you and Nancy, um, whatever it may be. Yeah. If you if we get the spreadsheet, which I'm sure we have, we can I can play. Yeah. I'd, well, it's not the size. I think we need to just play with the formulas and stuff. And because then you can look at the cells and see how we did the math and. Yeah. So, in this whole long conversation, long conversation. Um, we all we all felt that fourteen thousand per unit was going to stymie economic development and growth and create other problems with forty B and affordable housing. And the conversation about and I let, and I think the goals for doing the single meter metering we all are on board on that. Right. So that you know I think the number is a is a question. We have to be have to make sure that in this conversation we also talk about the impact on uh, developers planning or planning of a if we if we leave a fort one building or if we leave it that you have one site regardless of building and it's fourteen thousand dollars then you know the multi-building projects will be not disincented but if we go and ch say you know what which, you know, sort of makes sense. It's like, no, you know what? If you've got five separate buildings, you should have five separate meters and pay five times 14000 I don't want to set up a situation where the guy says, okay, I'm going to build one big honking building, you know, just to avoid that fee. So I'm just, just for something to keep in our, in back of our minds that there could be unintended consequences that are outside of the financial piece that we need to really think about when we figure out the final numbers. I think you're really close, but um, that's a good point. I am a little uncomfortable with with backing that much off of the um, hookup fee for a multi, I mean, maybe, I know you spend time thinking about is there a threshold? Yeah, that's where we started, but yeah. also every development is very different. So you could right. have five buildings with five units, you could have five buildings with 30 units each. So. Right. Where do you set the line? Units versus buildings. How many? Like, what is the line? And so that's why kind of Nancy and I Let's came up with. Simple. Yeah, I mean, we yeah. came up with this policy. I do to like try to, keep to address it all of those concerns. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we did try to think of a lot of unintended consequences, but. Yeah. No. And and from where this conversation started, huge progress. <coughs> huge progress. Um, any other comments? No? Let's try to find the water. Okay. So why, why don't we say the takeaway is um, we'll all think about it and figure out what we want to do. We'll get the financials a little bit more understandable, at least for me. I'll get together with Nancy and, and you if you'd like to get together. I think first if I just play around with the spreadsheet, I'll understand a little better. Yeah. Um, and then should we put it on the agenda for a, a future meeting? Is this, I mean... 
Yeah. Or are we are we interested in this? Are we not interested in this? Oh no, I'm definitely I interested in it. Going. But I just want to make sure that a the numbers work out yeah. and right. Yeah, I mean, I think of it as a sewer. If you've got 30 units, you're paying 30 sewer fees. You know. Right. Whereas this isn't. It's not synonymous with that. It's 30 units, one hookup fee, and 29 extremely discounted hookup fees. Yeah, I think it got, it came about as a result of the ch increase in the connection fees last yeah. fall, right? So now we're now approaching a year since that happened. We're now approaching, it was, at that meeting it was discussed that we would revisit the rates now every year. Yeah. So we're kind of bucking up on revisiting all of it. Yeah. No, again. you guys didn't do anything wrong. This no, 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 no just, I'm not, I'm not yeah. saying that we were. I'm just saying that, um, you know, in the other towns where this works, it works because the connection fee is four thousand dollars. It's not fourteen, right? So we're trying to kind of mm -hmm. fit a square hole into a round peg to make right. it work. For okay. Us. So hopefully Great. we can find the balance. Of Any comments from anyone in the audience? Okay. Great. So we'll we'll find a future meeting once we have time to look at this and, and reconvene. Thank you. Um, All right, uh, now we're on the new business. Well, I'm, well, we should probably, so now the next topic is the uh, Cedar Point sewer project reconsideration. And as I mentioned a couple um, times before in the meeting, we have decided not to reconsider that. And the vote of three to two for a gravity system is gonna stand the way it was voted last meeting. And then I think Jim mentioned that he is going to get the RFP out as soon as possible to get that proposal bid, correct? Right. right. All right. Now, new business um, discussion vote to close the fall special town meeting warrant. Um, do we have to put? Did you put placeholders in it for um, a couple of the things that were discussed tonight? Like the um, accounts on aging. Tony, it's here. here. Yep. Okay. You have this. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Oh, great. Yeah, it's right there. <laughs> great. Um, so does anybody have anything else? We, we're not going to talk about these tonight. We're just going to close the meeting unless somebody has, excuse me, close the warrant, unless somebody else has something else to put on here. So there is... Um, Unpaid bills, reconciliations, capital projects, rescind debt exclusion authorities, authorize um, SRF, um, CPC, uh, uh, confirm town meeting vote. What is that one? What's E? Then, the, then I assume that these, the um, sign bylaw, um, zoning <coughs> bylaw, housekeeping stuff, amend the map for Hummer Rock. Those are all zoning articles. And will all these people be coming before us? The zoning will, I assume, for theirs. What about some of the capital projects? Will you do those, Jim? Or I'll probably do most of those. Yeah. Okay. CPC. I don't know. If, do you know if CPC has any? They might. They are already scheduled on a future agenda. Um, plastic bag. Uh, cell tower lease. Yes, I'm sorry. The plastic bag. That's just Some technical codifying. changes. Yeah. Technical okay. upgrades. Yeah. Property tax relief phase three. Petition article. A water moratorium. That's a bylaw. What's What's there that about? No, number 16. Yeah. Yes. Oh, it is a petition article. Yeah. I'm sorry. Right, so the sorry. last three are the petition articles. A water moratorium, petition to have a water moratorium, and a petition to transfer water supply authority from the Board of Selectmen to a separately elected water com uh, situ water commission. So when will they be coming in? They received and uh, confirmed today. I sent them to 
So what, what when will the proponents be in next meeting? Well, yeah, whatever I meeting we do on the warrant. Yeah. Um, I actually have a calendar of events put together. Yeah, I mean, it'll, sometime in October. Mm -hmm. Right. All right. Anyone have any reason not to close the warrant? Nope. All right. Can I have a motion to close the warrant? Move to close the fall special town meeting warrant. Second. At 937 on September 3rd, 2019. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. Further discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. I think. Yes. I'm sorry. Mr. Sean. Harris. Oh. I did, but then. You yeah. did. You did. You, you. Yeah. Okay. Now we have a, uh, a couple of one day malt, wine and malt licenses. We have a motion for. Move that the Board of Selectmen approve one day wine and malt license to fork in the road for an event at the Situate Maritime Center on September 7, 2019, from 4 to 6 p.m. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 Move that the Board of Selectmen approve one day wine and malt license to simply serving to LLC for an event at Situate Maritime Center on September 10th, 2019 from 4.30 to 8.30 p.m. Second by Second. Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Excuse me, Mr. Chair. Yes. I think it was read aloud that it was 4 to 6 p.m. for Fork in the Road. I think it's 4 to 8. So I just want to make sure that the record. Did I say 4 to 6? So amended. <laughs> it I'm is. Sorry. I'm sorry. It's four to eight for four a fork in the road event. Okay. And I said four to Karen six. Karen verbally just oh, said four to I'm six. Sorry. Yeah. I made a mistake. So I just want to make sure that we got it right. I didn't catch Damn it. Oh. Just swore on TV. Okay. <laughs> so now we are on um, the boards and committee appointments. So there are a bunch of them here, um, and there's some that I think we definitely want to do, and if people aren't ready to do some of them, we can just do them at the next meeting, but um, so I'll just follow your lead in terms of okay. what we want to do and not do tonight. Um, so this isn't even half of them? Okay. So has, there, has everybody come in who's applied? Yes. Yeah? Oh, really? The interviews are. Oh. Hmm. Hmm. Sorry, Karen, I'm a mess here. All right. I'm still waiting for some renewals. Uh, the board's attorneys are not on. So the first one on your list, Lorraine, is the. See, um, I, pr I printed it for you, so it'll be yeah. easier for you. Yeah, so but there's I'm. There's a list of the um, many applicants, the renewals, and then there's a motion to change. Right. I'm trying to yep. go down the list on the agenda. And it, it so matches the list on the agenda. Yep. So the first one is town election poll workers. That one's easy peasy. Where is that? Sorry, that one I don't see. Does anyone have the poll workers? I don't have the poll workers. I don't have it either. I know I saw it, I just don't know where.
These are for the Republican and the Democratic Town Committees. Um, additional workers are very much needed, and there are uh, uh, of people have come forward that said they also want to help. So there are three names <coughs> that would like to be added to the uh, town poll workers. Um, do you want me to read their names? Yes. <laughs> um, or do you want the motion? Just the names first, or? Uh, the names of the three people are Marilyn Stocks from Wheeler Park, Bever oh, more than one, uh, Beverly and Robert Shire, both live at 33, Sarah York from 25B Meeting House Lane, would like to be, um, have shown, would like to be election workers for 2019-2020. Right. Second. Motion. Oh. To <laughs> Move to appoint the following people as election workers for 2019 to 2020. Marilyn Stocks of 2062 Wheeler Park Drive. Beverly and Robert Shire, 33 Central Ave. Sarah York, 25B Minting House Lane. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Woo! That's just so hard. Now we're going. Now we're going. <laughs> All right, so why don't we, the next one on the list is the Animal Control Board, tab number three. They have two openings and one renewal, and there was one applicant, um, Carol Sullivan Haney, mm -hmm. Hanley, excuse me. Motion. So, uh, yep. Move to appoint Carol Sullivan Hanley to the Animal Control Board for a term of three years or until a, a successor is named and completion of the conflict of interest law online training program is completed within 30 days. Second. Second. By Ms. Canfield, further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Should do great. Thank you, Carol. So we also have a renewal here. Uh, I don't have the paperwork yet, so we're going okay. to do one So we'll just do that one. Right. So the next one is the beautification committee. Did we do that one? Yes. She has yep. interviewed yes. Barbary, yes. Did we appoint her yet or no? No. Okay. Can I have a, a motion or discussion right. for um, beautification, which is tab four? Uh, Move to appoint Deborah Barbary to the beautification commission for a term of three years or until a successor is named in completion of the conflict of interest law online training program is completed within 30 days. Second. Second by Ms. Canfield. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 It is unanimous. Great. And the renewals aren't going to be done on any of these, on this one either? No, or are there? Okay. All right. Are we ready to vote um, CPC or do we want to? Well, my okay. we haven't really had any yeah we don't have any applicants, applicants. Um, we did have one person who one or two who said they were interested as a second choice but when asked directly they kind of said not interested right so I think we need to do Great. more recruiting I agree I agree we had three people that was their second choice yeah and, and they all were kind of like There, uh, there so it's uh, Robert Brand. Yeah, he didn't. Uh, he wants to Probably story. Burgess yeah. and Matt yeah. Nelson. All right. Well, let's come back to that if we he want to. Mm -hmm. First choice. Uh, conservation. I think we're going to hold off on that one. There's two renewals, no applicants. Okay. And the renewal stuff is in. Yes. Okay. Let's hold off on that. Um. Constables. So we have two constables that are renewals. Um, Todd Reardon and Andre Fahat. Can I have a motion? Move to reappoint Andre Farhart as a constable for a term of three years or until a, a successor is named and completion of the conflict of interest law online training program is completed within 30 days. Second. Second by Ms. Kern. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 And Todd Reardon? Move to reappoint Todd Reardon as constable for a term of three years or until a successor is named and completion of the conflict of interest law online training program is completed within 30 days. Second. Second one is Kern for the discussion. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Okay. 
Now we have um, Council on Aging. I'd like to hold that, Mr. Chair, um, until the next meeting. Okay. We have Economic Development, which is tab number 15. Um, the renewals on council Oh, yes. 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 We could actually do the renewals if you want. You want to do us do it all at once? Okay. Um, economic development. So there's two openings. Yeah. There are one, two, three, four applicants. Yeah. Um, and there's no renewals. So... I need to look at my list here. Yeah, I got to look. Mm. Yep, if you have. Yeah, um, I, I would like to um, suggest that obviously we endeavor to have a balanced, you know, board with different strengths and um, bringing different components <coughs> to the board. Um, and Suzanne Hoffmeister has already demonstrated she's attending meetings she is active with the friends of north situate and is a scientist researcher and has a whole different skill set than those already serving um and she's already as you know we talked about earlier she's already um, understands the mission and is familiar with what the board is doing so i would um, be happy to move to appoint suzanne um, so is that a motion to appoint Suzanne? Uh, move to appoint Suzanne Hoffmeister to the Economic Development Commission for a term of three years or until a successor is named and the completion of the Conflict of Interest online training program is completed within 30 days. Second. Second by Ms. Kern. For discussion, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 That's unanimous. While we're on that subject, Miriam Wall was in twice. Yes. So, you know, you, Miriam Brown Wall. Yep. So you, you have many applicants, and you, you know, you can only pick a few. How many come back? She came back, and you know, known them for a long time. I think should be a great addition to the EDC. Okay. So we've got. So then there was the um, her, two Matthew openings. Nelson, and Warren Talbot were the options. Right. Matthew Nelson was also, he was the second with CPC, although this was clearly his first choice. Um, and he has an extensive finance background. Um, so I would, I would. I thought he had a nice uh, big picture type of mm -hmm. vision aspect. Notes. I just 19 year resident. Okay. Um. Motions. Move to appoint. <laughs> Where's my thing here? Matthew Nelson, right? Yep. Move to appoint Matthew Nelson to the Economic Development Commission. Um, for a term of, I want to see the other economic one. Is it three years? Three years. For three years, um, or until a successor is named and completion of the Conflict of Interest Law Online Training Program is completed within 30 days. Second. Second by um, Ms. Conley. Further discussion? Yes, no, people to come in. They come in. Oh, there's good candidates. There's yeah. it's that's, that's what I think I'm gonna say. Yeah. I I just I mean it's nothing against him, it's just Right. I, I don't have any notes on this. Yeah. There's no it's yeah. these are tough to there's four yeah, people right. for two spots, everyone has right. a different skill set. One person stuck out to somebody for whatever the reason oh, yeah. is and yeah. the, the, um, I I would I it'd be great if one of us could I mean reach out to her as uh, I mean, she's very interested in North Situate, mm -hmm. and that group is really getting some traction and, and sort of almost a subcommittee of this at this point. Okay. She would be perfect right now because that's where her interests are. Right. right. 
to do what to be on the North to be Situate? on the Friends of North Situate. Um, yeah. I don't know if she, I mean she may be already, but all I know, but um, she's been here twice, and that is clearly her interest and her passion. So she could she could definitely be tapped in for that. But um, this is how the plot last got her. Yeah. Yep. It's a great committee. Well, I hope they keep going to the meetings and get involved. And like I said, it's this is kind of hard when there's only two spots and four good people. Um, we have a motion and a second for uh, Matthew Nelson. Any further discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Yeah. Aye. All opposed? Aye. Four to one. He is appointed. Um, the next one on the list is Cultural um, Council, which is tab number 21. Are we done? I'm sorry. Right. So on this one, there are. It says seven renewal. We can add, you can, we can add whoever came in, right? Cultural Council, because it says. Yeah. Maximum of 22 members. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. Put her on. Did we we did already vote, Betty. I really? have it because I have a check that we did that. I thought we I thought we voted oh, her. We did. But I'll tell you what. We all said no problem. I don't think we actually voted. Yeah. Let's just do it again exactly. just to. Yeah. What'd you say? We'll just do it anyways. Yeah, you all said no problem. There's no actual vote. Right? And no actual vote. Right. Move to appoint Betty to... to to Bankton. To the Council for the term of three years or until a successor's name um, and completion of conflict of interest. Online training program is completed within 30 days. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. And then Sarah Smith is up for renewal. And I assume if she's on here, she wants to do it again? Yes, she's the chair. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> she's done a great job. Move to reappoint Sarah Smith to the Central Cultural Council for a term of three years or until a successor is named and completion of the Conflict of Interest Law online training program is completed within 30 days. Second. Second by Ms. Canfield. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, now we have the uh, Sister City of Ireland, which is tab number 33. Move to reappoint. Uh, is everybody ready to yep. make a motion? Or yeah, any, okay. Make Move to reappoint Brenda O'Connor, Siobhan Hunter, Kevin Callanan, Audrey Donovan, Peter Mahegan, and Carol Sullivan Hanley to the Sister City Ireland Committee for a term of two years or until a successor <coughs> is named and completion of the conflict of interest law and online training program is completed within 30 days. Second. Second by Ms. Conley. Um, further discussion? Is this. So were there any new openings? No. There's none. And there was just one applicant as a second choice. Okay. Um, any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. And the last one for the evening is going to be the Veterans uh, Service Advisory Committee, which is tab number 35. What number is it? 35? Yeah. So how many? Oh, Hold on. Yeah, let's get our arms around this before. Yeah. So, Lorraine, correct me when I say it wrong. So we currently have one renewal yeah. and four openings. Correct. And four applicants. That's easy. Now, there can only be so many. So many civilians, right? Civilians. So right now, the committee is made up of Ed Kelly, Kim Stewart, and Aubrey Schwartz. Correct. And there are. F so there's five. Uh, no, that's a renewal. Okay, so do we have a. Um, You'll have a majority of veterans on the committee. I think it has to be a super majority. So Drew is a vet. It's really difficult. Ted Hanavan was a vet. Kevin was a vet. I'm just saying that's what the. That's what it says. I think you're okay though because look, these guys are all vet veterans. No, you're not because Mr. Kelly's not a veteran. I'm not. I'm pointing that he's not, but the other three are. Drew is. But there's Kevin two is, civilians, is. so you need how many? A super majority, 
it has to be five and two, right? Not four and three. Five and two is a supermajority. So there's already two civilians on. So you can't put another Will civilian. We'll get in trouble if we do it. <laughs> okay. Let's. Um, I'll get. I've gotten in trouble for worse things. So. <laughs> <laughs> right. it's, it's a majority still. Is Mr. Wheatley coming back? He has not responded at all. Okay. So wouldn't that be considered an opening then? Are you considering that an opening? Yes. Fit? Okay, okay. Wasn't sure. So. So we won't do that. We'll, we'll put on the people that we can and, um, and then we can maybe put Mr. Kelly on as a um, alternate member or something or associate member. <laughs> and we'll I'm need gonna make a motion. All right. You go Move right ahead. Second or not. Move to appoint Drew Kitchen, Kevin Norton, Ed Hannafin, Joseph P. Kelly to the Veterans Services Advisory Council for a term of three years until a successor is named and completion of the conflict of interest law online training program is completed within 30 days. Second. Further discussion? We can put them on there, but it's we need another we need another veteran. Um, then we put another veteran on. Wait, we're gonna have one. One, two, three, two, three four. four. Right. And then three civilians. No. And then Ed Ed okay. is also Is it just a charge five. or is it a one, two, three, four. So let's look let's put them on now and let's look into that and if we have to put something on the warrant to do something and we can do that as well. Well it's it's a your committee. Right. So if I'm saying if we had to do something more than that. I mean these are all people that are passionate that want to move. Oh, I'm not trying forward, not to so put somebody on there. I'm just trying yeah, to follow the rules. Yeah, you're trying to play rules. by the rules. I understand. I like to <laughs> uh, all right, so there's a motion out there <laughs> to put. I seconded it. Who's the fifth? Ed, oh, you Ed. He's renewing, Ed. renewing, Ed. Okay. renewing Ed. Okay. Ed. And there's two Kellys there. That's why it's a little. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 They have, can, can they you have put their on board. The, it's five nothing. It's unanimous. Can you uh, just bring the charge for that? And we can review that the next meeting. Yeah. Yay. That's great. Sean, you trailblazer, you. I'm sorry. <laughs> <You're> crazy. <laughs> You're nuts. Do you want to reappoint Mr. Kelly? Well, we, we did with that. We did it all no, in one. we did all in one. Well, there's no, two Kellys. Motion. It's a separate yeah. motion. Okay. Is yes, can I have a motion? Yeah. Move to reappoint. Otherwise, yeah. We move to reappoint Ed Kelly to the Veterans Service Advisory True. Council for a term of three years or until a successor is named and completion of the conflict of interest law online training program is completed. Second. Second by Ms. Curran. Further discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Okay. That was painful. Um, it always are. It's, it's hard. I mean, we get a lot of good people and. Thank you all for oh. applying and not easy. Yeah. Yeah. Green. Um, all right, so we'll put the rest of them next meeting. Shout out to Donna Benny, who's resigned from beautification this year. Oh, did she? Oh, that's right. Yeah, let's not accept that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Donna. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Donna. <laughs> Donna has done a great job with that group, taking it to a new level. You do a good job and they right won't let you quit. <laughs> All right, moving on to other business, uh, liaison reports. Um, I'll start. I just attended the um, focus group for the um, Situate Harbor Resilience, and it was uh, the government group, more or less. It was very well done, on time, quick, a lot of good ideas. So I think that's going to be a, a good committee or good task force, whatever it's called. What's the next step? Um, they're going to compile all the various focus group. Uh, they had about seven or eight of them, as I understand. They had like four one day and four the other day, the day before. And uh, they're going to compile a report about, you know, what uh, came out of those focus groups. Great. We're going to save Situate Harbor. <laughs> Yay. Anybody else want to get anything? I right. We'll move right along to correspondence. Wait, I just want to, I was just looking up the date. I just want to remind the board that the planning board will reconvene on the senior center. I believe it's on the 26th. It's on their agenda. Okay. Oh, uh, the 26th, that far? That's late. Planning board? 
the 12th, isn't it? Is it, is it the 12th? That's I'm sorry. That's why I was just trying to quick look up because. Yes, uh, I'm pretty sure it's the 12th next week from Thursday. Um, yes, I'm sorry. I stand corrected. Two things. So, yeah, planning board will meet at 7 o'clock on the 12th, and it will be the senior center will be on the agenda there. Good. That's a four day. Good. Um, correspondence. We received a press release from um, oh from Jim Berdro about um, <laughs> our government finance finance officer association certificate of achievement for excellence in financial reporting to the town of Situate. Um, so that was <coughs> that was we also have that document. Don't give Jim credit for that. Nope, I would give all <laughs> the credit, to, credit Nancy to Nancy and Pam and their staffs. What is it? Five so, straight years or something? Yeah, that's excellent. Congratulations. Yes, yes that's great. Do yes. we have so, a plaque? Why aren't we doing something official? We have a plaque. They give us a little bit of on. I love okay. it. Okay. There are five more, and then we get another new plaque. Good. Yeah. <laughs> yes, so there, we did Actually, receive we <laughs> from the Government Finance, Associ uh, Finance, Finance Officers Association the actual uh, notification on August 15th of that award. Yay. I don't a think we ever got it before you came here, Nancy, so kudos. Yay. Great job. Thank you. Um, we also received Since a. Nancy works for me. Jim, oh, good job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good job staying out of Nancy's way. <laughs> <laughs> She's not allowing you. Okay, sounds like a plan. <laughs> Mrs. Mrs. Canfield, did you read that sentence that says um, that it's the highest form of recognition? I didn't. Would you like to read it? I would because <laughs> I think, you know, this. It's a big I deal. see a lot of uh, social, you know, chatting out there and I just want people to know that this certificate of achievement is the highest form of recognition in the area of governmental accounting and financial reporting and its attainment represents a significant accomplishment by a government and its management. So thank you. Thank you. I think it's a very important sentence to read out loud. Mm -hmm. I'll put that in my minutes. Also. Shall I continue? Uh, on August 26th, we received a letter from MassDOT Highway Division um, informing us that the MassDOT Highway Division will be doing um, inspections of municipally owned bridges that span between 10 and 20 feet. Um, well, we already did one. So I couldn't, I read this whole thing, I couldn't yeah. figure out what they were saying. Is the bridge good or bad? Looks no. like it needs some work. They have a huge ranking system. It says they now yeah. perform uh, these things, but they yeah, haven't but actually performed them. Is that bridge? Was it a good bridge or a bad bridge? I'm sorry. The, the bridge. The DOT inspection certificate that we received back for the bridge over on Gannett Road. It was That's pages and pages long. Yes. There was yeah. with pictures yeah. and it's the culvert. So I didn't look at it. It's <laughs> over the culvert. I think it, there are a couple things that I think need to be looked at. It's over the culvert on Gannett. Yeah. You know, we are we placing one on um, Bailey? Bailey. Yeah. yeah. Bailey. Have we done the one on Gilson yet? No. This one said it's in pretty Probably good shape. Probably the gas company. I actually did read it. I yeah. That. I, I tried. Was, I find this, I saw Waiters the scale, were used during the that. inspection. The it's no, there. Neither. Well, they didn't give, they, gave, they, gave, they graded different aspects of the bridge. Yeah. Like safety and then all different things. But there was no so. real summary. No. I'm on I DOT. agree with that. All right. I think, I, think Jim, good, I, think, I think you should look at it because there were some things with regards to safety that just as far as, you know, maybe that's additional striping or something that needs to be done. I don't I'm know. Sure it kept it. Yeah. Um, okay. I think it's very telling that they were smart enough to send someone to Citroen on July 3rd, though, to do this inspection. <laughs> 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 Who had a house in Hummer Rock? Or mine. I think we just figured out the math on that one. Good. Yeah, it's a it's a checklist of things. So this would go to. This is our responsibility, even though they review it, Jim. Yeah. Yep. All right, Kevin. Okay, and I'm sorry, I'm just whipping through these. Um, we uh, are cordially invited to attend the Wampatuck School opening ceremony on Friday, September six at nine thirty in the cafeteria to start the new school year um, and they will also be I think officially opening the playground yeah so awesome. that's exciting can anybody go I'm, I'm planning on going if I'm around I okay. think I should be around great 
Thank you. Um, I have a 10 o'clock meeting. And that would, I believe, conclude our correspondence. Great. Can I have approval of the minutes? Approval of the minutes to accept the minutes of August 20th, 2019. So moved. Second by? Second. Second. Ms. Curran, further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye, it's Aye. unanimous. Okay, now can I have a motion to adjourn and sign documents? So moved. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. Further discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.